Here we go. Thursday night. We got a great show for you guys. Very excited about tonight's show. This is one of those shows, guys, where, you know, it's funny. You're a host of a show, but to have a great panel like we have this evening, folks, it's really kind of a treat for me as much as it is for you guys in the audience. So uh, allow me to be the uh, the maestro, if you will. But the, the, the instruments and the enjoyment you're going to get is from this outstanding panel. That being said, guys, please take a second. Hit that like button. Please, if you'll take a second, hit that subscriber button. It means a lot to me. Your name comes up in lights. I see the great Jimmy Harrison's out there. Silent Merc, by the way, congratulations to you. Silent Merc had a great last week. I'll, I'll let him explain it in the chat if you'd like to, but I'd like to say congratulations to him. War One, I see you out there. J Row 49. Guys, it's going to be a great show. All right. We have a lot of topics to get to. You know that sometimes we only get to three or four tonight. I'm going to try and do a couple speed runs because a few of our members are going to have to leave at some point, maybe in the second hour. And I want to get as many of these questions through. That being said, if you look at that outstanding description right there, that description's at least a B plus in 10th grade English. Look at that, will you? That gives you a little synopsis of what we're going to be going over tonight with these great fellows that are going to be joining us on the panel. And a few more will be trickling in as the show continues. That being said, right above that description is the join button. That's these guys you see in the great green lettering right there in the chat. These guys are always here. We game together. We talk all week long. It means the world to me. Shout out to the great Jez7780 who's here at the Gaming Grindhouse. I appreciate it. Guys, hit that like button, please. Tweet it out. Let people know we're live here in New York. I want to say thanks to each of these individuals one by one. And then we're going to this great panel. The great Judah Zook, Wooly Gamer, Mumble Ranting Gaming, Tyson Web 509, True Woody, Alfonso Carter, Brap, who may be joining us later. Damien, the great Jimmy Harrison, Andy Hart, Red Hood 420. Red, if you're listening to the show, buddy, he wrote me earlier. He said, I'm not feeling good, Mooch. Let's try for next week. Shout out to Red. I hope you're feeling better. Ham Solo 05, Rob Jones, Night Ripper 7, Toto Dope. Thumbs, thumbs. JC2013, I see him here in the chat. Lord Metroid, Rabbit Got the Gun, Fastbender, Archwar Angel, Biggity08, Slow-Mo Backslap, who's going to be joining us tonight on the show, and then him and Gaming Forte are doing DPS podcast at 9 p.m. Eastern right after this show. Go over and check that out as well. Henry Heck, Silent Merc, Ocelot, j 49 Anthony Dixon, Briaros, Neil S., our major mooch maniacs, Rob64. By the way, I'm going to give a Big shout out here to Lotus Esprit. I hope I'm saying it right. Or is it Esprit? I'm going to call him Lotus Esprit, who donated so many subs last week. So many subscriptions to, the, to so many people in the chat. I can't say thank you enough. So, Lotus, I'm going to call your name out many times throughout the night tonight. Rob64, Chad Stud, Lotus, Josh Arise, Wizard57, Cryptopsy, Sweet Baby, Rick L, Moose One, Zero Steel, Composite Smurf, love the name, Capone, shout out to Capono, Detective Seeds, PlayStation Rewind, Cloud Strife, Abdul, Just Wait, Warawana, Corey Massey, Brian East, Thrifty PlayStation Gamer, Hero Down Under, CR Bruin, MASH. Shout out to MASH, by the way. MASH was here a few weeks ago when we had Lono on. He came and also gifted almost 20 subs throughout the entire show. It meant so much to the channel. Thank you, MASH. E. Kim, Bitrate, RPG88, Four Star General, Truth Serum. Shout out to Truth Serum. Your boy Roy, Scolari Brothers, DC Gaming, Miko, J. Bari, and Gaming with Persona. You guys already know this. That's how I start my Saturdays with What's Up PlayStation, 11 a.m. Eastern on Saturdays. I recommend you guys do the same. Tactical Gamer, Danelle Brown, that guy Smitty, our VIP Mooch Maniacs, the Wise Old Gamer, Raji, Domino Zero, and of course... We miss you guys. Our honorable mentions. Delirium Blade, Selene Shalane, General Thad Ape. Where are you guys? You're out there without food, water, toilet. Please come home. And our forever Mooch Maniacs, Longshot 316, and the great Optimus Code. That being said, guys, I see all you guys saying, what's up? It's going to be a great weekend. we got a lot to talk about and a lot of gaming to do this weekend. It's going to be fantastic. Uh, Mana, I see you out there as well. Please, guys, tweet it out. Let everybody know we are live. Hit that like button. Uh, without further ado, this man was very hard to get on the show. It took about three or four weeks we had to get all of our family arrangements out of the way. Out of the way, but he's here tonight, and we're going to need him. The voice of reason returns to Crossfire. The great Eric Jackson is back with us again. E, how the hell are you doing? Man, I'm, I'm doing great. I appreciate the invite. I'm happy I could finally make it. Like you said, man, it's been crazy the last couple of weeks. Uh, but no, happy to be here, man. Uh, good panel, too. Great to have you, E. Great to have you here. And then, of course, you guys know my voice, Doppelganger, also on the XNC podcast on Monday nights. Uh, the Mag is here. Mag, yes. you know, I love when you make the show because, honestly, what I usually do is I head down to my favorite pizza place. I get a couple of slices. When I come back, they don't even know I'm gone. Mag, how the hell are you yes. doing tonight? 
Uh, I'm doing fantastic, Mooch. We got a great panel, great chat already rocking and rolling already. Um, listen, you guys all sound like Optimus Prime to me, so I think it's me on my end. So I'm going to reboot and uh, come back in uh, <laughs> when you guys fire up the first topic. But either way, excited to be here. We got some things to talk about. We got some things to do. We have some things that we have to argue about tonight. Absolutely. And it's going to be a fantastic night. So let's get into it. All right, guys. And also, while Mag goes ahead and, and leaves the Discord and, and fixes what he's got to fix, make sure the audio is good. You guys are my audio engineers, okay? So please let me know if the audio is sounding just right i can make some changes on my end if i have to and last but certainly not least this is what i'm excited for you guys he returns to crossfire it's been so long since he's been on the show but he's been busy if you guys haven't noticed the great jeff grubb has been busy he's with giant bomb and jeff i gotta say before i even let you talk i thought one of your tweets today was absolutely pulitzer i'm i'm at work and i'm laughing out loud literally literally he says uh game mess mornings happening in 50 minutes where i'll correct the record while i said motive considered making dead space to him still laughing and is no longer doing it it turns out that it ex- they explored it making dead space Two, and is now no longer doing it so the great jeff grubb who is with with us tonight, does a lot of work. You guys know him on Game S Mornings, uh, Giant Bomb. Jeff, welcome back to Crossfire, buddy. I love that tweet this morning. It made my day. How you doing? I'm doing I'm doing great. I'm doing fantastic. What, what's there to be uh, upset about? Right. Everything's great. Everything's good. It's, uh, <laughs> it's you know, man, video game news. It's one of those things where uh, that game of telephone can get out of hand sometimes. And uh, that one made me feel especially crazy. But, I, you know, I, what I realized uh, going when I woke up this morning yeah. was, uh, this is the kind of thing where I'm like, oh, you know, that was kind of frustrating. That was annoying that I had to deal with that. And I'm, then I remember it's like when I do these news stories that causes problems for these developers and publishers all the time, which I always say was never the goal. I'm never trying to do that. Right. But it's like, oh, so I got a little put out. Well, who am I to get upset by it? At the end of the day, it's all just fun. It's all literally just fun and games. Yeah, absolutely. And you even reiterated that on this morning's uh, 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 games mess. And I, I love that you said that because it, it is what it is. And honestly, you know, Jeff, tonight we've got topics to go over. We have questions. And I'm just thinking this, and I'll even say it on the air. You don't have to answer by no means. But I bet you there's a ton of people that would love the, not not the gaming industry, okay? There's plenty of executives and PR folks that go on for that. I'm intrigued still by the world that you're in because how you get this information, and I, I know you can't reveal sources. That's not coming out tonight or on any show. But how it all goes down and how you're able to get some of this information, because at the end of the day, you're right a lot of the time. You know what I mean, Jeff? So, like you said, you, you you take the hits, you give the hits. And that's the best thing about you. You were made for this kind of business. So, Jeff, I'll start with you. I'm going to put you on the hot seat here. And it's kind of a fun topic before we get to the meat and potatoes. Really, a lot of people talking. And I think you went on. Uh, it was one of the... Um, was it the X-Cast with the kind of funny? I believe. Yeah. I apologize if I'm wrong, but you mentioned there's going to be some Gear 6 talk possibly at the summer showcase. Let's have a little bit of fun with this. Is there anything that you could tell us about? Because we are, and you shout out to the great Jez Corden who said this as well. He goes, I love showcase season. So it's showcase season, right? We're going to start talking rumors. What else can we kind of expect from this Xbox showcase? Is it going to be a Bethesda Xbox show again? Is Xbox going to do their own thing? What can we expect? Yeah, I, mean, I would expect them to kind of do the Xbox Bethesda thing kind of back-to-back like they have been doing. Uh, you know, the value of that is clear where, um, you know, if you have two brands sitting under a label, then it feels like, oh, man, that's more valuable. Right now they can do that with Activision as well. Uh, that's the reason when you open up Disney Plus and you see, like, oh, we have Nat Geo and Star Wars and Marvel. And it's like, well, it's all Disney, but they try to make it feel like separate stuff. So you feel like you're getting your money's worth. Mm-hmm. So they'll keep. I think they'll keep leaning into that. Um as far as like what we can expect, it's still kind of early. I do hear people are, are pretty excited though. Uh, I'm I, I'm I'm always hesitant because what like what one person gets excited about puts other people to sleep. So I'm not making any right. promises about what these showcases are going to be like, especially the Xbox One. Uh, but some people seem like, hey, no, there there will be some stuff there. It should be a pretty decent one. Um, and for me, like what I want from it, Mooch, is I want them to just give me the updates yeah. on the games that have already been announced. Let's make some like substantial Thank claims you. about those games. Let's get that stuff out there, out of the way. And then if you have a couple of new surprises, that's great. But really, for me, that's icing on the cake. Let's just make those games that have been announced for years now feel more real. And if they could do that, I'll be pretty happy. I'm not like... I'm not like, oh, man, I, I need a reason to turn on my Xbox. I'm not that guy. I'm fine one, yeah. one or the other. If you have a couple cool games, though, fantastic. And I hope that's what we come out of that show feeling. I, I like what you just said. I literally had it in my notes for last week's show. 
and I don't have the list in front of me, but I'll mention a few. Meg, I'll go to you on this real quick because Jeff makes a good point. It's not that I don't want to see gears. I, you guys know, I, I stream two or three times a week, a, sh- a shameless plug on my own on Twitch, on, on Mooch TV, but I have huge gear stuff behind me. I'm a big gears fan. Not that I don't want to see gears, but there's been so many games now that Microsoft has these, you know, the publishers and the teams under them, so many games mags have been shown that, like, do I need to see another three or four CGI trailers of things that no. are going to come after no, the ones we not. haven't seen? Right, Jeff, no. I agree with you, Meg. I, I, I kind of agree with Jeff. Yeah. Now, now the thing is, uh, you know, Jeff's mentioned it. Uh, I even, you know, even spoken to Randall Thor to Colt about these kind of things. It says, you know what? It gets to a point where it's all right to see a CG trailer if you need an announcement. Say, all right, that's great. It's coming. We understand it's coming. Leave it at that. And leave it alone until we could see something tangible. And what I mean by that, for anybody who does not get what I'm trying to say here, is that, you know, video games are an interactive experience, right? So the thing is, I'm not looking at a trailer like a film trailer, like the new Joker trailer came out. I watched it, I said, great, I'm going to go see it in October. And that's all there is to it because it's not an interactive experience. I want to see what I'm going to be doing in the game. And the only time you get a trailer like that is within usually within six months to a year of when the game is actually releasing. So I want to see something that's more tangible about what's actually coming up in the next year or so. I know that sort of shot them in the foot a few times already, but... I'd like to see something that's already basically almost completed at this point so that we can get in there, look at what's going on. We can make your plans for the next six months to a year, that kind of thing, right? And the thing is, if you show something like a Gear 6, when they they said, oh, Gear 6 is coming, it's going to blow everybody's mind. I'm like, all right. Yeah. Great. Yeah. Like, when when are you going to see it? You're going to see it, judging by uh, the Coalition's uh, history, it's probably going to launch bet- within the last year of the series consoles. Right. And mm. if you look back at like what they did with Gears 5, with Gears 4, you know what I mean? And it, it always launches towards the end of the generation, very much like Naughty Dog does with like The Last of Us and everything else. They launch towards mm. the end of the gen because they've kind of squeezed everything they could out of that out of that uh, that hardware. I could see the coalition doing that. Now, that being the case, you're probably talking about at least two years down the road. I don't need to know. Like we all know. We all know this is the last of a second trilogy, so to speak, and we all know it was coming. It's okay to show it. It's okay to you know give it, give us a minute and a half trailer and leave it alone. And after yeah. that, I don't want to see developer diaries. I don't need to see videos of like people walking on the beach in like you know in Iceland talking about this that and the other. <laughs> I don't need any of that. No, we don't. Let them let them work. Let them do their thing. You've announced it officially. Walk away from it. And just concentrate on what you have coming up because the important thing, and I'm not going to get into a tangent about this, but the important thing, especially especially Xbox, is that if Hellblade lands, lands, okay, it's got to be that's got to be the beginning of a new road for them of recovery, so to speak, assuming that that can even happen. Uh, and what it ends up happening to be is you have to have consistently great games, not one, not two, that's not going to do it. You're going to need four, five, six consistently great games in order to turn the narrative around. A big ship does not turn on a dime. So, And, and, and that also goes for people's opinions, especially public opinion. So mm-hmm. that being the case, what I'm getting at here is focus on what you have coming up. You've got what, uh, you've got Avowed. You've got Indy Jones. You've got well Hellblade in a month or whatever. There's right. not much you could do there in a month, but you know, do what you can and and you focus on getting those games out the gate and doing great. Call of Duty that's now under their their banner. So you got four opportunities to launch great product. Yes. Focus on that. Don't focus on next gen and that bull crap and this and that. Oh, we're gonna give you new hardware. You haven't done anything with this hardware. So let's focus on yeah. right now. Yeah, that's and, all I and, and Meg, about. I'm glad so you said that. When it comes that. to these showcases, focus on what you got in front of you, and that's all there is to it. I'm glad you said that. You kind of gave a segue to the the part B of the, of this topic here, but we won't get to it quite yet. But we will in a moment. Eric, you heard what's going on here. You heard what Jeff said. You hear what Meg's saying. Mm-hmm. Eric, where are you on what you need to see? Because we are in showcase season here. It is. It's the middle. Uh, we're in the middle right. of April. Okay, we're, we're looking at a June showcase typically. So, Eric, what is it you need to see? Uh, the Gears talk is very exciting. But again, I, I think Meg's right. If we even see it this generation, it's going to be near the tail end, which there's nothing wrong with that. But let's let's talk about the games. Where's Let's see more Fable, right? Let's see more of these other mm-hmm. games they've been talking about. That that uh, and I, I always forget what it's called. I had it in my notes. Industrial Revolution. Whatever that revolution thing is there. Clockwork. Uh, clockwork. Oh, clockwork. Thank, yes, clockwork thank you. Revolution. Right. Yeah. That's the one that, you know, show some of that. Give us some of these other things. The one by Compulsion Games. Show us what they're doing. E, what do you think? No, I'm going to cherry pick a little bit from uh, both Jeff and Mag, you know, kind of say the same thing, like where, like what Jeff said, yeah, it's, it's great, you know, you know, you hear about gears coming and everything else, but 
uh, let's get a little excited about those games that were announced, especially some of those games around the, the big acquisition talk that was like all the rage at one point. We know a lot of those games don't have any major updates on them. You know, they got, you know, some light showings here and there. So, like, I want to see a little bit more, like we said, Clockwork Revolution. I want to see a little bit more Stop at Midnight. I want to see some of those yes. things happen. Um, and some surprises. You know, I'm always about, like, hey, I didn't see that coming. You know, Hi-Fi Rush gets ba- bandied about back and forth, but that was a, a nice surprise drop. You know, say what you will about how the game is playing out and where it's over <laughs> with Sony now and everything else. Yeah, I love that game, but I thought that game had a spirit about it that I was like, that's a cool shadow drop. That's a cool surprise announcement. Let's get a little bit more stuff like that. You know, that kind of comes out of nowhere that you weren't really expecting. Um, as far as Gears goes, um, yeah, I know like, the, like the, the talk is like there's excitement you know, about it and it's going to blow, like, blow our socks off. But what I've been wanting from Gears for a long time now is something that makes me feel a little bit like Emergence Day again. Like the excitement we had around that. And I know that's hard to do with a franchise that's been around for a long time and it's on its like going into its you know sixth game, seven if you include um what was the one with Dom and uh not Dom with uh Oh Judgment. Cold that's Cold what... Yeah, Judgment, yeah, right? Judgment. Yeah, 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 uh, which yeah, yeah. I actually I like Judgment catches gets you a lot of shit, but I actually like Judgment. That was a good game. Um but I'm like even I'm a I'm a Gears fan, so I always like have some expectation from Gears and I don't I know that they did some different things. They kind of did like semi open world a little bit. They kind of threw a couple of like some light RPG element in there, but I'm like lean more into it. And one of the things I want to see them kind of lean more into is the combat of it. You know, freshen that up because the thing I feel that Gears has gotten stale with is you kind of know what's going to happen. Like, you know, you clear a room, you move to the next area, you know, you get on comms, you find out what's happening. As soon as you move to the next room, you see a bunch of like pylons. You know, oh, I know what's about to happen. Yep. <laughs> you yeah. know. Yeah, we're about to go into combat again, That's and then right. kind of freshen up, speed up the combat. So, and I know the, the thing that's very controversial when it comes to a game like Gears is you you have this this space of the old heads, but Microsoft also wants to talk to new heads, but they're afraid to piss off the old heads. I'm like, you can't have it both ways. So you got to do some things to move it forward because well, guys e- are always like, e- well, the- if you do that, then it's not Gears anymore. E- the one thing I got to just say there to piggyback off, and I think Jeff, me and Jeff, uh, months and months and months ago, we were talking about this, and it's one of the things Jeff said. I'm going to say what you said. Microsoft really does have to have a discussion with some of the developers because I was talking to a lot. Listen, it's a small census, guy, so I don't mean that this is, this is by no means the answer, but I play a lot of Warzone, right? And the reason Warzone still has, what, se- upwards of 70,000 people watching on Twitch and who knows how many people watching on YouTube, okay, at, at, at any given time, is like hey, now Halo was polished multiplayer. It it felt great, but it's it just feels old. And I know that you have all those people yeah. that we follow on on X now that are the 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 uh, Halo. They're in the the tournaments and the the they're unbelievable and they love it and it's great and they're bringing back this map and bring the forge and and recreate this. But it just that that sediment of that old. It just it feels it's slow and clunky. I know people are gonna say no no that's yeah. fine. No, if you like Halo, you like Halo. I'm not. That's not a a bash by no means. I'm just trying to say keep up with the times. People have been saying this for a long time. Even Gears heads will tell you you could speed up the gameplay a little bit, just a little bit more. Like like how Outriders moves. Like Outriders is faster. Like it's more fluid. It's the same type of Good like example. combat, yeah. but it All moves right. more fluid. You know, like you're moving around. You know, the area is a lot faster and. And that, here's, the, here's the funny thing when it comes to, you know, shout out to the Xbox base. They're funny because when I'm, they always want to say Microsoft is forward thinking. Like they're always forward thinking, but they never want them to be forward thinking with the games. Right. They want what they've always had. And it's like, you can't have this thing where it's like, well, my grandpappy drove a Ford, my daddy drove a Ford, <laughs> I drove a Ford, and now my kid's going to drive a Ford. And your kid's like, no, I'm not. Right. No, I'm not. <laughs> you know, it's like, so. If they want to widen this net and do some things, yeah, you have to move some things forward. You know, you have to introduce new characters. You can't keep holding on. Eventually, they're going to be wheeling Marcus out in a wheelchair. Right. Yeah, you know, I, you know, I got to start piggy- moving some things forward. I got to piggyback off that, and I agree with you 100%. Now, that goes for all forms of medium for entertainment for me personally, and it gets yeah. agitating. Right, right. Now, I'm, tur- I'm, t- I'm turning 50 in 10 months, so I've been around the block a few times. So I know, I, you know, I watch everything from, like, you know, from reading comic books to movies to, to video games, all that kind of stuff. And the one thing that irritates me more than anything is that 
you know, and people get stuck in a certain way, and you're absolutely right. When, especially when it comes to gaming. Oh, you can't do that. You can't get rid of right. this in in, in, uh, in gears. You can't get rid of the the slam uh, the the slam block in gears. You know, up against the wall. But but about. Just make something good, and people will come along and play it. And even the old ones Every that bitch and complain and this and that, if it's quality, they'll begrudgingly go. They'll mumble under their breath for a few minutes, but guess what? <laughs> At the end of the day, they're going to go do it. It's like people bitching. Ah, oh, Superman's underpants need to be on the outside. No, it's garbage. It needs to be on the inside. <laughs> right. Where's this big girl? Say, Shit. Is the movie right. good? That's it. You know, and right. if the movie's awesome, nobody cares if he's wearing red underpants. Right. Okay, that and, and it's the same thing with video games. It, it's like you know, if you have like the the, the cover uh, mechanic and this and that, you're gonna change this, change that. If you change it for the better, and and you and improve, it's like the Japanese thing. You know, a constant improvement. That's a that's a Japanese mantra that they use in everything, and especially in video game development, constant improvement. And so, if you could do that, but you know, increase the quality, people will come along. And what's that gonna do? That's going to future proof your product. So Mooch is absolutely right when you talk about the Halo thing. The Halo thing is agitating. I, I love, you know what? I love the Halo multiplayer. I thought it was a lot of fun. However, I was there from day one, right. so for me it was all right. My son and his friends they want nothing to do played with it. for thirty minutes yeah, and they don't walked want to do away. It. Yeah, they're like, we don't want this. This is more, like, what is this? Looks archaic. It looks old. It looks everything else, you know. And and that's just that's just the, the whole thing of it. And then I want to, you know, I'll pass the baton in a second, but I want to, you know, touch on something that uh, that Mag said. Because I'm already seeing the, the playbook unfolding with the hardware talk. It's like, we're really going to do this again. We're going to go and start setting up all the content creators and everybody else. We're going to go back into the cheap flop thing, right? And I know some of that talk has already started with the, the PlayStation Pro and should that happen, should that not. I get that. I understand that. But Microsoft, when it comes to the hardware side, I'm, I'm seeing the narrative where they're kind of saying, you know, like around um, Hellblade 2 is, well, the hardware is getting old. It's like, by, by what standard? I mean, yeah, it's getting old, but we really haven't seen anything happening with it yet. Yeah. And here we are again. We're about to start kicking the can down the road again and start going back into the whole, we're about to revolutionize the game, player. Yeah. Well, how many times are we going to do this? How many, you know, we, we, we had the, the monster. We had the monster that eats monsters. And, right. And then the monster that eats monsters only got usurped by his little brother. Yeah, but what's the alternative, though, <laughs> you know? for them? I mean, uh, like, them to come out and be like, well, we're not going to try with the hardware. I mean, of course... No, 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 I'm not gonna... saying don't. I'm not saying don't. No, I, yeah, I know, but, but, don't but, lead. But, don't lead with that message because we've I think, done that. Right, you, you, that's fair. I, I, that's, that's fair. I think the thing has to actually uh, uh, deliver on that. But I think that's also the position that, that they're in with the hardware, where it has to be um, kind of a boutique item at this point. They, If they're going to keep making Xbox hardware, I think they do need to make something that is uh, distinctly more powerful than anything else on the market and also more expensive uh, because mm -hmm. wh what else is going to set the Xbox apart? They they need to stop trying Game to go and Game just make like the same thing as the PlayStation and, and be like, oh, well, it's just a PlayStation with you know fewer games and a different label on the box. They need to do something right. different. I think this is the pathway that makes the most sense for them, but you're, you're not wrong that they need to just kind of shut up and do it. Yeah, it's yeah, like, I don't, don't, don't like start they, to focus again. What's up, Slow? I, I, yeah, what's up, guys? Um, what's I up, think hey, they hey, should what's do, up, what's up, man? Um, I think they should do two things. Uh, they should never launch when PlayStation launches again, um, yep. as far mm -hmm. as their brand goes. And PlayStation's brand, clearly, PlayStation's brand dwarfs their own brand. You're not going to win people over by competing directly against a basically a powerhouse when it comes into the console market and also provide something that's different because as as you said eric like if you're just basically with just you know doing similar things and have a similar demographic of of gamers that will play on your device well and now and now even worse you're putting your own games on their device too then mm -hmm. people are going to be looking back and like, all right, so I have an option here of an Xbox or a PlayStation. And this Xbox has, it's, well, some games that the, that no one else has, but they eventually go to over to this PlayStation. This PlayStation has games that never come over to the Xbox. Guess what I'm going to buy? I'm going to buy a PlayStation. And so they, they, sh they need to create something uh, uh, from a device that actually differentiates it from the other they're, they're that's the key. That's, it. that's key, slow mo. Um, what you just said, just differentiate yeah, um, them from from the PlayStation. About, about gears, uh, I'm gonna go. I, I echoed a lot of things you guys have been saying for over the past week, 
and, and when it comes to gears and what we expect or what we want and what it needs to do. But honestly, it probably just needs to just not be the one of the top three IPs for Xbox anymore. I mean, like when you when you have this balancing act where you're trying to please the long term gamers that have been there forever while also trying to uh, engender this game to a brand new audience the the gameplay does not speak to younger gamers. The mm-hmm. Gen Z's that, that Phil talked about, they don't care about that gameplay. And frankly, each Gears that comes out seems to lose more of the hardcore Gears audience too. So it's like you have to try to find this balancing act where the foundation is still Gears, but then it's doing different enough that you can actually have it appeal to people who don't care about how awesome Gears was in the 360 era. And frankly, what they really need to do is have new IP that can be so impactful that it does what Gears does. And then you don't need yep. to make Gears be this new That's, like, yeah. revamp. Yeah, absolutely. You can, you can let it be Gears 6, and it's typical Gears, and only the Gears players play it, but you don't need it to be any more than that because you got this new IP that's now your new part of that top three of game of, of actually halo needs to go like this too but like the, the fact that they are still relying on the tried and true and 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 a game design that is at this point archaic because all of us here played it when we were in college and high school and we thought it was fresh and new and now we're just like yeah that's just gears so yeah. it's just they need to get past right. that I mean, and they just they, they need to make a game better, yeah. right? I mean, I, I mean, I don't think it's yes. like there's much to it, but more more to it than that. I mean, this is um, as someone who was a, van, a fan of uh, the Zelda franchise, I was getting pretty worn out with the uh, uh, the sort of uh, how they were doing things with the formula there, and then they made a better game, and everyone showed up for it, and those both those games sold uh, more than 25 million copies. I think, man, they're, 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 they're on the way to sell more than 25 million copies. Well, there, so, Jeff, I mean, there you go. You can make a, make a game better, and people will buy it. I, I mean, there it's yep. not more complicated than that. Yeah, it's it, a fine it, balance. Sorry, sorry, Mitch. Go, go ahead. ahead. No, I, I was just going to piggyback off of what Jeff's saying. I mean, even the game you see on screen right now, okay, you had a Dark Souls. Don't get me wrong. Dark Souls probably, if Dark Souls 4 came out and it was the same kind of linear path that the other three were, guess what? Probably still would have sold very, very well. But they went ahead and changed it to an open world concept, and it, it went from very well to, to yeah. absolutely yeah, selling behemoth. gangbusters, right? I mean, Jeff... Yeah. It, I'm, not, I'm just saying, very similar example to what you're saying in that essence, right? But the yeah, I'm, point- I'm just saying like that there is a way to take to like we are, we've already had the conversation. We've already said the the parts where you, you, people don't necessarily or aren't flocking to this gameplay style anymore. Right. You can take some elements from that and make it feel modern. Yes. Uh, if you, you either yes. do that or don't make the game, uh, is kind of where I'm at these days. Right. Uh, or, or if you do put it out, don't be surprised when no yeah. one cares. It's like it's right. It's pretty basic. Go ahead, Mag. I took the uh, the mic from no, you, no, but. No, no, it's all good. I was literally just going to agree there. Is that there's a fine balance, and I, and I did notice something I find with myself and people that I've spoken to when, for example, Gears 5 came out, and you, you, nobody talked about it after about it. I mean, Ninja did his thing on, uh, on uh, what the hell was the thing that you used to have that Microsoft had? Mixer. The streaming service. Mixer. Um, yeah. Oh, Mixer, yeah. Yeah, yeah, right. So, he, you know, he did uh, the thing on Mixer. Two days later, nobody, nobody was playing it. Nobody yeah. played the multiplayer. It was dead on impact. Same thing with Halo. But the funny thing is, I enjoyed it. I enjoyed Gears 5. I enjoyed Halo Infinite. However, I'm not what's going to take the game into the next stratosphere. I am part of a 10%, right? Of the, yep. of the audience that's an, you know, an aging gaming audience that could say, oh, well, it's not made for us anymore. Really, it's not. I understand what they're trying to do. They're going after my kids, literally, right? They want my kids because my kids are going to be consumers for the next 30 years, and that's what they're looking for. Now, what the thing yeah. is, if you've got people that are my age starting to turn away saying, I'm kind of bored of this. You got a really big problem because now you've ostracized the older people and you don't have the younger people latching on. So this is the point where you don't have to make a drastic change, but you absolutely do have to make a change. The the Elden Ring uh, example was absolutely perfect because that is exactly what they did to change it up just enough that it became a phenomenon. Yeah. And it's something that we're like, well, why is it a phenomenon? It's just... It's it's Dark Souls. It's We've Dark been playing Souls. it for decades, right? right? right. But, but the thing is, right. it's not just Dark Souls. It's now Dark Souls with just that little bit of a modern twist to it. Yep. Uh, just that little bit of a, you know, a little bit of a sprinkle of this. Mag, and there's a lot of, it- Mag, there's a lot of gamers out there, probably even some yeah. newer gamers that have played Elden Ring and said, you say, geez, man, how, would you think of Dark Souls 3? They're like, I haven't played it. 
Right, right, but it, exactly. It's bringing people to this. The other thing that yes. Slow Mo said that I thought was uh, I can't remember if it was Slow Mo or Eric that said this, but one of them said that they need to have an iconic figure. And and you might go, what do you mean in that aspect? You have Aloy that came out of nowhere, right? Then you have right. now either Joel Miller or you have um, you know what I mean? You have different characters from these newer. And I know people might go, come on, The Last of Us is ten years old. I understand that, but I'm saying before it was just Kratos and it was just Nathan Drake and it was just Astrobot. All right, you right. keep every generation. Try to have one new face that comes out of it. I mean, that's that's a very hard uh, task well, to ask, yeah, by the way. You're but, evolving, Mooch, and it's just like a franchise in sports. You're not going to just have the same star over and over and over and over. It's going to evolve to somebody different. It has to. And, and then... You know, and every few years and every few seasons, yeah. all of a sudden, someone else is going to emerge as the new big star and, that's, and this and that. That's whatever. kind of like, like you can't be the Vladdy Guerreros so, forever, like you know, right, from Toronto. Right. You know what I'm saying? And so, like, it's always going to be someone else that's <laughs> going to emerge. And the same thing with video games, and the same thing with you know, with with an eye with an iconic character or a mascot, if you will. And it has but to see, evolve from there. So, so that, this is where I go back to Jeff with a question. By the way, shout out to the great Mash who stopped by and gave another ten gifted subs. Mash, thank you so hey. much. Very, very kind of you. But so, Jeff, when I so now I stop and I think, right, because I'm listening to the panel, you guys all have your ears to the ground and you have Avowed, right? And you have Hellblade and you have Clockwork uh, Revolution and we've got uh, these other uh, maybe Everwild, if that ever becomes a thing or not. It doesn't matter. South it, the, of Midnight. South of Midnight. But mm -hmm. when I think of these games, Jeff, I don't think iconic character uh, emerges. I could be wrong, but I don't know. I also don't. This is the thing. I don't think Xbox is thinking the way we're talking right now. I think they're just trying to say, listen, throw as much stuff at the wall, throw it in Game Pass, move on. And I think at the end of the day, that fills the, in air quotes, arcade style mentality. But it's why they haven't been able to progress in the console space or even the brand growth space, right, for a very long time unless they go out and buy a publisher, which they're going to be a very, very, very large third-party publisher, and Xbox will be around for a long time in those terms. But as far as platform and the name, this is why the Xbox One didn't pick up and go. They didn't do anything after 2015 except for Sea of Thieves. That didn't really hold an iconic character. And here we are. We're going into the fourth year of this generation, and it's just like, you know, like you, people could say I'm excited for Avowed, but you're like, you know, it's like, you know, like where is that like gravitational pull for me or anybody else? And we are like I have three Xbox Series X's in the house, Jeff. It's not like I don't like Xbox. You know what I mean? It's it's like you, you, you there's where is this? And I'm, I was hoping is there anything that you hear rumblings from like the inside that says you know man there's a cre there's creative juices flowing in this particular uh, developer that is gonna really try to put a stamp so that you have Master Chief. You know what I mean? You have Forza, you have Marcus, and then you have our next Xbox person uh, character to carry the flag. Yeah, I, I mean, sure, I, I, but I just, I don't think, I think you're right that they're not thinking on those terms, but not for the reason you said. I think they, they look at the numbers and they see what are the uh, characters that younger generations are attracted to, and it's their own characters. It's, uh, it's you know, Steve from Roblox, or from Minecraft, it's the Roblox character. Yeah. It's, you know, you talk to a kid yeah. about what kind of skins they get in Fortnite, it's not actually the dumb IP stuff that we all go gaga for. Like, oh, I get to play as uh, this character from a, a movie or anime I like. Right. They're like, no, I actually like the skins that, that Epic made, the the, uh, the original skins in the game. They're attracted to that stuff, and th those things are generating millions of dollars more than any of these other games are making. So when Microsoft looks at that, they're like, oh, they're not, uh, yeah, sure, I think this doesn't help them sell Xboxes, but we've established over and over and over and over again, that's not the business they're in anymore. I think they mm. think that they that is yeah. behind them now. Yeah. So th they're, they are looking at like, okay, what? how, are, how can we make... Uh, marquee games franchise games and how can we make stuff that makes game pass feel worth it sure and definitely you're right characters would help with that iconic characters would help with that but you know elden ring i, I know people will point out some of the uh the the, the like v villain characters that you fight in that in that game as the marquee characters there and i agree with that mm -hmm. but really people are, are remembering their own player character and the stories that they told exploring right. that world so right. you, it's not 100% necessary, it would help, and it's clearly been a hurdle for them. Mm -hmm. I don't expect them to suddenly get over that hurdle. Um, and, and I think, it would, like, uh, you know, if you look at the way people treat some of these games, like Overwatch for a very long time there, where it's like, mm -hmm. yo, fan art and and uh, and fan fiction, and it's just millions and millions of pounds of this stuff hitting the internet constantly. Having something, oh, c c you know, they have Overwatch now, Jesus. But uh, <laughs> having oh, something like Overwatch uh, happen again for them, would be the kind of thing that would move the needle, but I don't know if that's the needle they care about anymore.
Yeah. So, all right. So, Jeff, let me, uh, because I, it was part B of the question, and, and I can't remember who brought it up. I know Slow Mo was talking about it, and Mag, and he brought it up as well. Let's talk about the hardware for a second. So, the one thing that you said, Jeff, that made me kind of scratch my head when you were answering Slow Mo's point about this is what they have to do. I mean, when they say hardware and the rumors are out there, I'm, I'm, I'm getting, again, well, not this is anything new. You've even said it yourself, Jeff. There's a bit of, it's like mixed messaging, but I'll ask you because I, I know you've had this conversation at least a thousand times. Are we getting, are we getting, or do you believe we're getting, I should say, a dedicated, like, handheld, almost like a, a let's say, a, a Steam Deck, okay, more powerful, of course, and that is going to be Xbox's chance to say, hey, we're going to come out a year or two before Sony's PS6, we're going to offer you something that's extremely powerful that you could take on the go, and it docks to your TV, and it plays 4K, whatever they're going to say, I don't even want to put... Uh, a 60 or 120 label to it but my point is is that it or are they going to offer a weaker type more like a switch type of of handheld that docks and does what we just said maybe works more in line with like an xbox series s in strength and then have another xbox series x2 which is you know the almighty powerful again type of uh typical traditional console uh, what what is it we're really looking at and will we see I, i'm throwing a lot of questions at you so basically i'm asking what kind of hardware will we see and will we see this in the summer game show uh yeah i mean to, to, to clarify if there was a handheld xbox series s that would be the most powerful handheld in the world right now like that is right. i mean that's, that's significantly more powerful than anything we have right correct, now so correct if that is if that's the the, the bar that they're going for I, listen yes i that's why i think their strategy is a very expensive home console and then a handheld and that way you um have this like two-pronged attack that doesn't that can feel distinct and can grow the ecosystem and feel like its own thing without having to necessarily go head to head with the PS6, which will have to be a PlayStation the way a PlayStation has always been. And then, of course, Sony can have a handheld as well. I'm sure they're investigating it. I'm, in fact, I'm positive they are. Mm -hmm. um, uh, but yeah, the, the, that is I think they're looking at usage data. They're seeing the way that people who buy the Steam Deck and people who buy some of these Windows based machines are spending a lot of money on video games. That's the engagement numbers they care about. And so they, they can't let that be, they, they can't get left behind by that. So yeah, they're going to do that. And then I think instead of having just a, another console that's like every other console, they will do something that's more expensive so they can kind of uh, take the market from the margins, which I think is a pretty smart move. I don't, obviously they wouldn't be doing this if they were in the healthiest position, but in terms of like having to make adjustments and making a big play, I think it's a, it's a fair strategy. It's, it's something that can work for them. And I would be pretty interested in that. I, I, I like these handhelds. I, you know, I'm a huge steam deck fan. I love yep. my steam deck. Me too. I like yep. the windows handhelds. I don't love any of them because windows is yes. very bad. Thank you. But F Phil Spencer agrees with me and he's like, Hey, yeah, we're, we're trying to make windows better. So it's like, okay, I'm listening to that. If you are serious about that, mm -hmm. I think they can make a big splash in that space. And I, you know, what that, what does that look like for them? You know, owning the ecosystem, you give people a windows, uh, a device, are they going to st suddenly start buying a lot of games through the windows store? I don't think so. They're still going to use steam, but maybe it's enough uh, that it like it improves their margins here a little bit and it's, it's good for them, but they, so, that's their problem. I, I'm just, I'll just be happy if I get a decent handheld that can play everything that the Xbox has on its ecosystem. So the handheld part, and I'm going to get to, I want to hear what the rest of the panel to say, but Jeff, this is part C. I didn't want to throw all of them at you. Last part here. The handheld coming out in 2026, I think a lot of people, regardless of their initial reaction, would be okay with that. Me too. I would also be okay with the latter, but hear me out. We've all said that, you know, a generation usually will go seven, eight. Some of them went nine years. Maybe that, then that's too long. We'll all agree on that as well. But how do you feel if we, if, if I could just say, if we could all just Superman two for a second, right? To lose our powers. Hey, you're not, you're, you're not, you're not a journalist right now. You're not in the industry. If you bought an Xbox Series X in 2022, and then in 2026, they're like a new console, a new traditional one. Forget the handheld for a second, because that, that can almost be looked at as an additional piece that runs coincides with your Series X. This is going to be a dedicated console traditional. That's a very, very short window. A lot of people, do you think that that may actually scar some of the Xbox fans? and customers that bought into the ecosystem and really kind of came out of this generation with not a lot. That's my only concern with trying to get out there before Sony in these regards. Yeah, I, it, it, yeah, of course, that's a possibility. But I mean, I think that's a risk they have to run. Okay. I mean, yeah. what, what position are they in to like, continue things as they are it's not it's you know it's not quite dreamcast bad the xbox no, series no, x no. is selling uh, uh, enough to kind of justify 
if you wanted to do a, a status quo, you could justify it, but why not like take a little bit of a moonshot here? And that might mean ruffling some feathers. The way you solve that is make the new thing something people have to have by putting out really great games, stuff that take, mm -hmm. takes advantage of the hardware. Yes. And yeah, people will be frustrated because they're like, I bought the last hardware. You didn't take advantage of that. Mm -hmm. This sucks. They will get over that if the games are good. I, I mean, I think that's what we're saying with, with Gears of War, right? Where it's mm -hmm. like, oh, the, you know, people might feel left behind if they change up the gameplay too much. They'll get over it if the game is good. I, I, I mean, I... I feel like every answer I'm giving you, Mooch, is make it good. Mm. Yeah, <laughs> like, no, no, like, no. But that's really that's all fine. we're saying here. That's fine. So, so Meg, I'll ask you then. I'll go because you hear yeah. and Jeff, you're, you can repeat that because honestly, making great games sells consoles. That's I mean, what you're saying is actually that's Mooch. just the bottom line. But Meg, I guess what I'll ask yeah. you is yep. Jeff saying, and I'm this. I'm not saying Jeff saying this. Microsoft saying this, not Jeff. Microsoft mm -hmm. saying, "Hey, we're going to give you a, a better console." But the thing is, is that What's wrong with the Series X? Well, you know, the thing is, uh, it's just I, fe I feel personally that I haven't got anything, pretty much anything out of that Series X yet. Like, it feels like they haven't squeezed any juice out of it yet. You know what I mean? Like, right. Like, so yeah. I'm, now I'm looking That's what I'm at saying. it. I'm so like, why not make the games it, for the Series X? We're all here. It, we it, have it, them. It, we have them. We have them, and you know, it, it was it, it was a bit of an investment too. At least up here in Canada, anyway. I know you guys paid five hundred dollars. We paid seven hundred dollars for these consoles, and yeah. I feel like I haven't gotten anything out of it yet. It's not not anything that I couldn't have played on my One X. And see, that's where that's where the jadedness started to come into play, and, and not just me. It's not just me. I mean, I'm, I'm still in the ecosystem, obviously. Hmm. Uh, you know, and I'm in one of the you know, <laughs> I'm on an Xbox show for Christ's sake with Colt. But like, you know, I, I still keep it real when I'm like, hey, you know what? There comes a point now. You know, where we had the Xbox One. I don't have to go through the history, but then you know, they're like, they they sold me on that promise of that One X fixing that one, uh, the Xbox One and everything else. Okay, great. Now we got better hardware. All of a sudden, a year later, they announced or whatever, a year and a half later, they announced the Series X, and I'm like, Jesus Christ! I just paid seven hundred dollars <laughs> for this thing. Yeah. Right, yeah. and then they launched with no software, and so I'm like, I was playing third party games. I'm like, all right, whatever. So, I, and I'm like, then they said, you know, the Series X comes out. All right, fine, I invest in that thing. And now, fast forward a couple of years, well, three years, four, four, almost four years, three and a half years, and now I feel like nothing's happened as well. And I'm like, well, what's going on here? Now you're about to sell me on another one. Fool me once, right? That, you know what I mean? That's the concern. Now it's getting to the that's it. now I can't be the only person thinking like that. no I, I don't think you're the only person who feels that way just yeah. bit, but I mean the answer is then don't buy it and force them to put it be, be in a situation where they have to make it better for you I mean I that is again I, 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 I don't see the problem I think it's the same answer that if they make it something you can't afford not to have right. then great then you'll get it and if they don't right. well that's their problem right see that's that's the thing Jeff and that's the other thing I was gonna get into is uh, very quickly is that it all boils down to the catalyst of this entire thing is compelling software if you do not have compelling software that drives people to your product then there's no point in any of this we could talk blue in the face about consoles handhelds next gen this that it means nothing if you don't have compelling software that drives people to that product it doesn't matter if you offer it on every screen on the planet. It doesn't matter about how much accessibility. I used to preach about this stuff. Saying, ah, oh, it's everywhere. They're going to get everybody. Look at it. Look what happened. How wrong was I? I will absolutely, right here live on this show, I will take that L mm. and say I was 100% wrong. That, that I said, I really, mm. really thought, I really thought that people were going to gravitate to it just because of the accessibility and the cheap price. And boy, was I was blind to that. And I'm just like, no, you idiot. They're not going to go there. Just because it's accessible doesn't mean they're going to have it. You know, you could have 100 bologna sandwiches out there, and if I wanted a salami sandwich, I'm not going to have that bologna sandwich yeah. just because you have it sitting on the table. And, and then, you know, it's the same thing here. It's like it, you, you see that people are not gravitating towards it because the software is not compelling enough to bring people over. And uh, it doesn't mean... And you know, and that's where that's one thing that Phil said that I absolutely vehemently disagree with him is when he was talking in that interview in one of his one of his apology tours uh, when he was talking about um, oh it doesn't matter if Starfield's an eleven out of ten it won't bring people over yes it will sure it would what is the matter with you if it was the game of the generation if it was the game of the century if it was the game that was going to you know cure world hunger and whatever else right. If that was the case, people would have found a way to get over there. Even if there is a paywall, uh, you know, with a console or a PC or whatever, people would have found other ways into the ecosystem. But, but I don't think that's what he means, that. though, because like I think. Well, well, okay, so would you say the PlayStation has had those games? Yes, absolutely. And that's okay. Why then why isn't it growing enough? That I don't know what's going on right now. 
I mean, yeah, the, the answer is clear. Like the, the people don't care if it's uh, the game they can't miss. They're happy playing Roblox. They're happy playing uh, Minecraft on this th thing they already own. It, th like there that's what bad. he's talking about. That that's okay. that, that's the argument he's making. Or, or and if he's not, then then I agree with you. He's wrong. But if that, I, I think that's what he's saying. Because when I look at the market, when I look at the numbers, you can have the greatest games, and yet even PlayStation's like like, well, it's not growing fast enough to justify what everything that we're putting into it, which is really what what, what we're saying. PlayStation Five, it's going to edge out probably PS Four in the long run, but the costs are going up. So when they look at the numbers, they're like, actually, we're not technically we're not growing. That's that's what I mean there. Just to clarify, right. No, 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 absolutely. I understand that completely. And there is there is another side to that coin, though. And I was thinking about that. And I've, I've heard that I've heard that uh, being discussed before in other shows talking about, you know, the engagement when you have Roblox and and Fortnite and everything else. Those 11 year olds and 10 year olds eventually are going to become 30 year olds and they're not going to be interested in those things. And they're, they're going to be looking for something that's bigger, better, deeper, you know, bigger stories, triple A experiences, that kind of thing. There are those people will mature into the product that we currently consume. Right, so I like I don't play Roblox. I, I'd rather throw myself out the window than play Roblox. Right, but like, and I see these in, in Minecraft and everything else. I can't do it. Right, I want I want those stories. I want the, you know what I mean. I want those narratives. I want those big bombastic uh, set pieces, whatever else. Mm -hmm. I enjoy all that, and I enjoy the immersion of those things. Right, mm -hmm. and those kids will grow up to those things, so they, it will come around. I just feel that maybe there's also a possibility, and we're not going to get into this tonight. But there is also a possibility about this economy that we're go <laughs> we're going through that people just aren't spending as much. They're spending smaller amounts, and that's where those Roblox and those Fortnite skins come into play, and those season passes for ten bucks as opposed to 70 to $100 for a, for a game. Yeah, when you see the consoles really kind of take off, and I want to get the rest of the panel involved here, when you see those uh, those, those consoles really take off, it's, it's in the latter part of the generation when you'll see the PlayStation 5 maybe make its way down to a $399 price tag, especially after a year after the Pro's been out. I don't know. These are all hypotheticals. But, I mean, you take a game, Jeff, just to give you an example, it's like a Helldivers 2. So Helldivers 2 has brought just a few people that I know yeah, to but, go buy a, right a, a for console. sure but that, that that's the exact I think that's a, a proof of what I'm saying it's like it's available where people already are and many of those people are on PC and they're playing it and it did great across both platforms for sure right but I mean if they do more of that that means more games on more platforms which is what these companies are all talking about at the same time mm -hmm. I Oh, yeah. And you know, yeah. Mag, I appreciate. I, I, for me, that's the world I imagined that these kids will grow up and transition and graduate to the things to playing games the way we do. Right. Uh, you know, uh, we look at Matt Piscatello, who does track these numbers in the United States. Whenever he shows the, the numbers, he's like, "That isn't happening. We, we have no evidence for that story." Uh, and when we do look at the numbers, console sales peaked in terms of dollar spending in 2008, and it's never gotten back up to that point. Even, and that's like. With inflation, like they didn't adjust that for inflation. So two thousand eight dollars more was spent on consoles then, and since then we've had a serious inflation. And yet, even in the last couple of years during the pandemic, where we're selling a ton of consoles, it doesn't come close. So, right. it, it re, like reinvesting in this space is a risky thing. So I think I, I and it, you know, to like get back to the point that really matters to us, making good games. I think they are gun shy, and I think that's a bad thing. Mm. I don't think this is like. Uh, actually something wor worthy of, of defense. It's just like, this is why they keep saying these things and why we look around being like, where are the games sometimes? And th 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 the answer should be, well, who cares? Make good games and you hopefully you'll make more money, but really just make good games. That's your business. That's what you should be doing. Yeah, if right. Xbox or PlayStation made one good quality first party game a year, I mean, we all want more than that. But honestly, that would be something, and it's one that's memorable, one that does bring people, drive people to consoles. And don't forget, too, you know those numbers by Matt Piscatella and those, you know, 2008, though, the PC market wasn't as big, and the third-party deal, the third-party publishers weren't, some of them weren't going to PC. Is that true, Greg? I'm, I, Greg, I'm asking uh, no, you. No, yeah, for sure. But yeah, I, but again, that's just like, right, because now PC is, is filling in a lot of that gap. Uh, for sure. And right. if we we're saying like, oh, PC can like uh, uh, float the business so that we keep getting, getting the kinds of games that we want. Mm -hmm. I agree with that. We will keep getting the kinds of games we want. They are just going to be a little bit fewer and farther between because they're so expensive to make. It's, it's a story we all know. We've gone over this a hundred times now. Absolutely. Uh, but if we're just like talking about like the way that uh, Microsoft and PlayStation are behaving right now, where it's like it feels a little strange. That's the story there. That's the reason that they're behaving the way that they are behaving. No, and that makes sense. So, Eric, I'll ask you. Eric, what do you think? I'm going to go back to the handheld for a second and just the hardware question because you were inquiring about it as well earlier. 
And Brap, welcome to the show, by the way, the Great Basement Radio Arcade Podcast. Brap is Brap is apparently got a twin because he's he's at a, an event and he's here. The Great Brap, everybody. Mm-hmm. So it's great that Brap. No, the, the the event eventually got rained out. I told you, Brap. I'm not a weatherman, but I do have a no, crystal I ball mean, here. They, look, <laughs> yeah. they, they try to they try to keep it going as long as they <laughs> could. And it was like, all right, we're, we're calling. We're it. calling it's, the yeah. game. Uh, no, but Eric, I want to hear what you think. Uh, we're talking about a handheld here. And listen, let's forget about PS6 and let's forget about the next uh, traditional Xbox console that may come out in 2627, because those are things that just with time, you would have been like, yeah, Mooch, I, I expect that to happen. So what about the handheld, Eric? Does that change your opinion? And Jeff's right, by the way. We've also heard uh, rumors and, and talk underground of, of Sony looking into it as well. But Xbox doing it may have a little bit more clout right now because of Game Pass, etc. Taking games like that natively on the go and not having to deal with like the Asus, uh, the Asus ROG Ally, or, or or you know the the other ones that are out there. I personally prefer the Steam Deck over those as well. Like Jeff said, go ahead, Eric. So, question um, kind of comes up with that is again, who are they going for? Because I mean, who <laughs> I don't know. I kind of I kind of ask the question like. If you're hard pressed, you know, if, you know the the Xbox faithful, the most hardcore. If you ask them, what is what is Xbox today? What is it? Would, would they be able to give you a straight answer as to what? Because I don't even know if Microsoft knows exactly what Xbox is supposed to be today to any one particular consumer. Like who who would the handheld be for going up? I mean, I know Steam Deck is out there, ROG is out there. You have a host of other options because that's like the hotness right now, but. What does it do like for Xbox if it's is it supposed to be going like trying to pull some of the switch in? Are they going for the youth? Because again, the youth the reason the switch is so is, is I guess successful is because out of the box it just does what it does and that's it. You know, I, I see guys on Twitter again, that's a small sample size, but I see like the hardcore Twitter, like, oh that'd be awesome because then you could sideload and the minute you say sideload, who you who are you talking to? Because if they're trying to appeal it to like casual or whatever, it needs to be out of the box just like a game pass type machine that's like native in the whole nine but even then that's still going to be a hard sell to the general consumer Mm. and i'm like again are you just talking directly to the hardcore because that's exactly why you find yourself in the same position every single time like you know mag mentioned going back to the one x it's always this thing where they're talking to the hardcore and i'm like they're gonna be there who are you who are you trying to sell this who will this thing be for and yeah, you can get hyped and say, yeah, it's a handheld. It'll do this. It'll do that. I can access, you know, PlayStation Network and do, there's no guarantee that that's going to be exactly what it is. It sounds cool and it sounds like whatever, but again, who is it for? Yeah. So for me personally, I'm like with Meg, I'm like, I don't really want to hear hardware from you right now because that seems to be like your, your go-to in the pocket when you want to, you want to be that person where it's like, you know, the guy who just has the girlfriend that he always has to reassure, like, you, 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 still, you still like me, right? We're still cool, right? Yeah, well, hey, babe, like, you still love me, right? Yeah, the, I, That's I, how I feel like they're always talking. They're always trying to, like, reaffirm the games, you know, the games like are always, the hardcore base. Yeah, the games are always the guy behind the curtain. It's like, pay no attention to the guy behind the curtain. Look at the all-powerful wizard up here. Yeah, so the wizard, <laughs> right. the wizard is the hardware. So, Eric, outstanding point. And, and, and you know what? So, Brap, I, I never read Super Chats in reverse. But I do want to just say, and I'm going to get to all the Super Chats, guys. I can't thank you enough for all of them. Babor here, you know, the great Babor Country is here, guys. The show has started. He says, it's because you folks with a massive audience cry about $70 games. It should have been 80 You guys should have told your listeners the reality. So what I think, and Babor, if I'm misinterpreting you, uh, Jeff, I'm going to Brap here because Brap is, he's big on the map, Piscatella stuff. He's big on following the trends. Uh, Brap, do you think, and then I want to hear what Jeff thinks on this too. Do you think that what we're hearing from Piscatella and some of the analysts in the agency, right, uh, in the industry, pardon me, that, that the reason these dividends and the, the, the money isn't there is because we are still way behind what the value is? Or no, do you think that is incorrect? And the $10 raise that we saw this generation, which already got a lot of blowback, that was not taken very well by the gaming uh, community. Do you think that it, it's still under what these folks are, are charging or, or no, that's, that's just absolutely ridiculous. Uh, well, according to Capcom CEO, we, they, they've, we're past that $70 price point now. Uh, and that's, that's one of the interesting <laughs> things that like, um, Sean Layden's talked about too. He's been pretty vocal about it. Um, that, you know, like with, with gaming, uh, the, and he, he discussed this in, 
an article uh, uh, with the interview with GameIndustry.biz, and he said some of the effect that you know in the thirty odd years he's been in the business, one of the weird things that he's kind of encountered was this: how gamers just don't like price increases. And I get that, like I, I totally get it. But he said, "Look, it's you know, it's the what's what's the 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 thing that's really." Um, not sustainable per se with AAA games is really the this this static price to consumer that the the price has kind of been the same for God knows how long. Like if you if you do the math backwards, we actually paid more for video games back in the nineties, in the nineties, early two thousands, yeah. early two thousands. Even even if you adjust for inflation, go back to the start of last console generation, we paid more. So I mean, and that's the right, thing. What are we talking about? Star Wars is one hundred thirty dollars. Well, yeah. Well, Star Wars is one hundred thirty dollars. <laughs> and also, I think there's a yeah. there's also a cheaper option. I think for one ten, if I'm not mistaken. That's right. It's a deal. Yeah, it's <laughs> a deal. Yeah. Um, yeah. Is that crazy? Like, but it's funny. Like, like, like Grub mentions it. By the way, what's up, Grub? I haven't talked to you like forever. So, um, right. but it's funny. Like Grub mentions that, and it's like we hear about like the console market being a mature market. I'll, I'll never dispute that. It, yeah. It is what it is. It, it's a mature market. Um, and I've said this on many occasions. There's like when, when Mac saying, oh, we're going to put games on more screens. I mean, we kind of have that option today and you see like, we, we don't necessarily see a lot of people flocking to those options per se. Um, and even like Morgan Stanley had this, um, article, uh, or this, they, they, they put out analysis maybe about a year and a half ago about the mobile market. They said, yeah, well, even with the mobile market, the gaming mobile market, we're seeing that market mature now. And they cited, look, if, if that market's going to grow, it's going to result from figuring out how to squeeze more pennies out of that consumer base. So right. I've always argued there's there's a finite group of people that are going to play video games on planet Earth, and, and it just is what it is, you know. Not you know, it's it just there's so much there's so much um, in front of us right now in terms of demanding our um, attention in terms of entertainment. Like there's like entertainment is just so regularly accessible now. Yeah, you know, like it, it's it's hard. Like and, and so, um, but back to your question, which like it's. Yeah, I mean, we, we, we may have hit a point, um, if you believe what the Capcom CEO said, that maybe games, I know people don't like this, maybe the cost of AAA games maybe do need to go up, or else we're going to see more things like what Jeff brought up, three-day early access, and they're going to charge you $110. <laughs> yeah. well, I mean, it, 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 I, 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 Brad, I'm sorry to cut you yeah. off. I, I, I got to get going here pretty soon, Mooch, yeah. so yeah, I just want to like, I mean, th this is all part and parcel with what is going on. Yeah. It, like, when, I know people in, in chat just don't seem to like it, but I'm, I'm not making this up. Sony themselves are saying this in their earnings reports where they're like, look, we need to find growth somewhere else because it's not happening fast enough uh, to keep up with our costs. Mm -hmm. And so that does mean prices get raised on games. That's already happened to $70. They might raise it again, but that is not a solution, like a long-term solution. They can't keep raising the price. That just pushes more people out. They And, and really... Well, like most publishers, they sell most of those games as they like lower in price over time. Obviously, the big day one is the biggest day. And then after that, it's like, you know, lower the price and you get more people in at that point. But they're looking for growth in other places because you can only charge so much to people before they're like kind of tapped out. And, and that doesn't mean they're not trying. They are trying. They're trying. That's why we have so many subscriptions and subscription prices are going up. And this is every company that has this, yeah. both Sony and Microsoft yeah. have this. Uh, this is why they um, have so many microtransactions. That's why they uh, made their free to play multiplayer free because then you get in there and you spend money on those microtransactions. They're nickeling and diming us everywhere they possibly can. And the reality is that they've sort of gotten to the end of that rope. There isn't much left for them to nickel and dime us on, at least not where we won't push back. Like we're, we've accepted a lot of things, uh, you know, battle passes, all these other things. They, they tried um, uh, loot boxes. We pushed back really hard in that, so they couldn't get away with that one anymore. The, the, but they are going to keep trying those things, and it's the idea is get more money out of the same people, and that's the real reason why we uh, are hearing about Microsoft talking about a, you know new, a new hardware in 2026 so they can restart the generation with the kinds of people that will buy their hardware no matter what. And frankly, that's the same reason why we get a PS5 Pro because there's a certain group of, 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 of Sony fans that will show up and buy the hardware no matter yeah. what. Yeah. And they're like, hey, let them subsidize the rest of the growth. And that makes sense. But that's not long-term growth. That's not the number that they're looking at when they're when they're talking about, man, we got to start figuring out other places to put these games. So it, Sony's saying that. Microsoft is obviously saying way more and doing way more of that. They're way further down the line. Mm -hmm. But both of these companies are, are having a similar reaction to the exact same diagnosis, which is growth isn't there.
So Jeff, before you leave though, I, just a fun one. You, you got it. You, you know you get these always. The, the I get I get them too. Okay, over the past ten years, I get them all the time. So Warren Wana and they and they chat. He says, "Hey Jeff, now that the excitement of Halo Infinite's release has passed, do you stand by your comment?" Uh, Infinite's open world feeling like Breath of the Wild. And he goes, uh, and he gives yeah, the God, God symbol. He says, you know, thank you for answering the question. Yeah, absolutely. I, I, I think that there was definitely, I really liked that campaign. And for me, it was mm -hmm. this sort of uh, uh, sandbox, the sandbox element where it's like, I'm playing around in the space. I am stumbling across things I think are cool. Those are the elements I, I you know, not, not the entirety of Breath of the Wild. And clearly it doesn't match the quality of that game overall. I, uh, when I was reviewing that game, I gave it a five out of five, but we discussed like separating the single player and the multiplayer reviews. And if it would have been a single player review, it would have been a four out of five and the mm -hmm. multiplayer would have been five out of five. Cause I still think that game is very fun to play. Um, but, but it's, it was almost there and it, it had echoes of that and it was definitely going in that direction. And I think that very few game camp game companies are as good at making games as Nintendo. So mm. no surprise, it doesn't fully match that, but it definitely has echoes of that sort of idea behind how can we make this feel fresh and new. Well, last last question I'll say, Jeff, because I, I got to give you your, your your credit because I, I I read the quote that you had this morning, and I know you were talking about it on the Games Mess this morning. So the Dead Space two thing, real quick, and then I want I'll guys on the panel. I'm going to go back to what we were talking about with the showcase and move on. But Jeff has to leave in a moment, and also I'm going to ask the great slow mo backstop before he has to leave. But what do you think, Dead Space two? shelved and no plans for a game says ea were sales too low jeff or were the expectations just too high why 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 are they leaving it seemed like the community was all in on this yeah um it, it, it's a little bit of both um i think that uh, the expectations for the game as its own project probably were set correctly and i think the game surpassed those but then it's not about okay is it did it sell enough to justify a dead space 2 does it sell enough to justify taking away the work that this team can do on a battlefield, a franchise, whether they're right or wrong, I and I have a lot of skepticism here, but that they believe can get more money total than what a Dead Space can do. Mm -hmm. um, and th th that just seems to be where that landed. Um, but there, I mean, the reality is Dead Space back on ice. They're not making that anymore. Yeah. Um, they did consider it briefly, uh, and that, would, that consideration was around the time they were launching this game. And then that consideration seemed to drop off pretty quickly, and probably be, probably because they could see the numbers trending the way they were going, and they're like, okay, this didn't immediately turn into our Resident Evil, mm -hmm. even though I think if they would have kept doing it, uh, they would have been able to build that up over time. But they don't; they, these companies don't think that way. They just don't. It's, it's interesting. I'd love to see what's behind the scenes, what they're thinking about, how they greenlight something or they decide not to. Uh, when something seemingly on the outside from the consumer side seems like a, a success to a certain extent. Um, I mean, I would assume doing even a remake, which a remake does take a lot of work. I'm not belittling that by no means, but it would be easier than coming up with the whole storyline and everything all over again and all this, you know, the artwork to design the main characters in the world. That world already exists and then to make it, you know, beautified and make it better. I would I would think that would be less money and with a fan base out there if they did OK, that they could capitalize on a second one. But I mean, again, I don't know. I'm sitting over here in my gaming chair far, far away from what those folks are thinking at the, uh, you know, the round table that they make these decisions at. Um, no, very good. Jeff, and if Jeff, if you do have to go, I completely uh, I don't want to I keep, you know, trying to get you to stay here for the full two hours. That's what mooches do. Um, yeah, no, but. I understand. I, I, you know, I, I would just follow up. I said, follow that up by saying, when you look at something like Dead Space and you look at remakes, yeah, I think they say, sure, it's cheaper to do that, and I think that's one of the reasons they sort of go in that direction in the first place. But that is not how the companies think. They think in terms of opportunity cost, uh, the opportunity that this team has to either make another remake which is something they might not necessarily want to do. So they were probably going to change things up anyhow. That was always in consideration as well. But even then, it's like, okay, well, then we can let them stretch their creative legs if they want to. Mm -hmm. The other alternative, though, is we think Battlefield can make a ton more money. Shouldn't we just put them there? And once again, we see these companies making that decision, which, hey, put all your eggs in one basket. I think we saw how that hurt Activision. Yep. Um, but I think it, it all goes back to that same story of, where does the growth come from? And for these companies, they believe the growth comes from very familiar places. It is going to be something like Battlefield. And again, I'm skeptical of that personally, but yep. when I look at it, it's like, well, okay, what else does EA have that could reach that strata? And it's like, okay, it probably just is Battlefield at the end of the day that can actually get up to that level. So yep, I, I suppose I don't blame them other than the fact that I want to get more 
and varied, interesting games from them, and it feels like we are going in the opposite direction of that, and that bums me out. Yeah, no, that's actually a really good point. And I think that if you're looking at current IP in their portfolio, it would be Battlefield. I am also not the big, I mean, if they make drastic changes, I can see myself going back to that slow-mo. Slow-mo is one of our resident, you know, there's a reason he's uh, one of the co-hosts of the DPS uh, podcast. He's just uh, a first-person shooter fan, much like myself. Slow-mo, I've never really gravitated towards the the Battlefield, um, you know, uh, I would put it, blueprint. But is that something that you could see? If they made some subtle improvements, that could be a big moneymaker for EA and maybe one of the reasons they are pulling their talent from other groups and putting them on that. Um, so, I, mean, I think it does have the oh. opportunity. But I'm, um, I'm going to get going, guys. I'm right. sorry. I just want to say bye. Jeff, bye, guys. thank you, buddy. Have a great right. show at night. Yeah, right. Have a good one. Thanks, See you, Jeff. Okay, man. Um, I, I think it does have the opportunity, but I, I think that something that's pretty key that I remember EA uh, CEO Andrew Wilson saying about when he was in an interview asked about his thoughts about the ABK acquisition in Microsoft, he mm. looked at it, he was fine with it, not because he thought it was going to cause a problem in the industry or whether it was going to, you know, cause monopolies, or whatever, you know, any of the other reasons that the other detractors had, he was fine with it simply because he said it, it, it represented an opportunity for EA. Okay. And yeah. what that meant is that we saw over since maybe since like 2015, that Sony has been um, marketing Call of Duty, which is Battlefield's main competition on their platform. And so now they see now that Sony starting this year is no longer marketing Call of Duty on their platform. There is an opportunity now where another first person shooter. Yeah. And, and we know that Sony would like to kind of like replace Call of Duty with something of their own, their own live service game that that, that can kind of like fill fill that void but ea of course is going to look at like their own portfolio and say well we can actually provide that with battlefield potentially and so that marketing that would not like normally have gone to xbox mm -hmm. that's not they're not they don't want to market with xbox anymore when you're marketing call of duty right beside it they're going to want to go with the sony they want to go to a different platform that's got a much larger console player base and potentially more people that can they can actually uh, get to play their game. And That's if you see that as a potential opportunity yeah. in the short term, mm -hmm. uh, an opportunity to take take advantage of a situation of a of a vacuum of of marketing dollars that Sony would have been using for Call of Duty, then yeah, you want to double down on content for your IP that you think would be the best competition for that. Um, I think uh, what Grub said about uh, year over year growth makes a lot of sense. I mean, if you think about how these uh, these the shareholders are and what they care about, they don't really care that the money uh, the company was profitable. They care about year year over year growth. They want to know that the money that they've invested in this company is 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 making more money for themselves. And when it comes to that, yes, Madden and FIFA give EA a ton of dollars, uh, billions of dollars every year. But like that, they are really milking the same people who play those games over and over again, and yep. it funds all their other projects. But that's not where the growth is going to be. The growth has got to be from a different source than just Madden and FIFA. And so, yeah, I think you you combine all that, and it makes sense that they would then tell EA Motive, "Hey, look, you guys did a great job with Dead Space remake, and you know we, we, it actually exceeded our expectations, but." our expectations were pretty damn low to begin with and where it went is great, mm -hmm. but we can see even more growth over here. So this is what you're going to do. You know, we're going to put that on the, on the shelf. We're not going to do a dead space two or a dead space three or whatever the hell you wanted to do. <laughs> yeah. We want you to make a battlefield game now. And, and, and if you, the more teams you have on that now you actually, cause you think about like call of duty, Call of Duty had like nine studios making content. You know, they got lead developers as well as support teams actually all working into working together to make sure that there's an annual Call of Duty that comes out every year. That's right. E EA could never do that before. They tried to compete with that and they couldn't because they couldn't keep up with content as well as there are clearly people prefer Call of Duty gunplay more than Battlefield gunplay. Also, mm -hmm. they launched the game broken, like 2042 was 
completely broken at launch. Right. So in order to make sure that your games aren't broken at launch, in order to make sure that you have content that's coming out on a consistent basis that people can get into and you can actually get, engender a bigger player base for that, you need to have more studios on it to do it. And whether we agree with it or not, it's, that's the only way that Battlefield could actually be successful with, the, with, with what they want to do. They need to have more studios. So. You know, I, com- I completely agree. And I, and I wanted to ask that question while Jeff was here. But again, I want to I'm going to I'm kind of I don't do this very often. But when when someone's got to leave the show, I want to get a question out. I jump to it. I want to go back a bit to what we were saying with money and cost. Mag, quick question for you on yeah. this. So I just noticed just before we went live, this started really catching fire. Uh, Mike Ibarra. Uh, made a tweet <laughs> yesterday. <laughs> he made a tweet yesterday, and I, I you know, no, know, uh, knowing Mike as Mike, just been, I don't know him, but following him over the years, and and, and always this and that. My point being is, he made a, a comment, and I, I think I know where his heart was, but I, I, I don't know if the gamers respond. They're not responding <laughs> exactly the way that Mike thought. Mike said, and, it, and I'm, I'm kind of quoting him here. Uh, he says, I wish I could give those folks another 10 to $20 because it was worth more. He says, I've been enjoying these games, and I should actually grab the entire tweet. He, he says, I've been playing more single-player games as of late, and I'm paraphrasing here. Uh, and, and after I finished playing them, I've enjoyed them to the extent so much that I feel like I should tip, I, you know, we should tip uh, the the developers an extra 10 or $20. And that hasn't yeah. been going very well right now, Meg. I see wow. a lot of people in the yeah. industry are not very happy with that. Because, well, the first thing that was said by a few people uh, right underneath the, the person who retweeted him or, or quote tweeted him said, we all know that even if you hit the tip button and put $10 extra towards a game you liked, it wouldn't go to the developers. It would go to the publishers or, you know, one of the CEOs, yeah. right, Meg? So what do you think about when you hear uh, Mike's quote in that in that reference? Uh, yeah, that was that was actually pretty funny. I saw it yesterday. I read it. Uh, uh, these will also be my closing thoughts. I do have to make a I have to make a work call after this. Uh, but this, listen, we we discussed this before about how you know seventy dollars at this point is starting to become a problem for the you know because now what's happening is these rising costs of development. Now the funny thing is I I'm actually going to pull that back and say it's not a rising cost of development. It's a rising cost of developers who are literally going to price themselves out of a job. And that is absolutely going to happen. And I, and I stand by that a million percent. And I see what he's saying. I see what he's getting at. Like, you know, uh, what's his name? Strauss Zelnick also said the same thing. Remember he was talking about, he said, you know, people should be, uh, should be paying by the hour, depending on how many hours it is. It's like, how fair is it that someone makes a $70 game and you get 10 hours out of it? And then someone else makes a $70 game and you get 1,000 hours out of it. Right, right. Right. And so you look at those kind of things and you're like, okay, well, now you kind of balance it with other entertainment. Now look at like the, going to the movie theater. It cost me $150 to take the family to go to a, a, a 90 minute movie. And that's not an exaggeration. $150 up here to go take a family of four to a 90 minute movie. How do we have the balls to bitch for 70 bucks that lasts me possibly up to months? Right, so I'm looking at that. I'm not condoning. I'm not condoning. I'm just saying when you compare it to that, you almost look at the same situation, right? You have to look at that and say, okay, well, look what I'm getting out of this as opposed to that. And then, of course, you see those numbers uh, uh, dropping. Now, what he was saying is, I think what these studios, first of all, that's nonsense. No one's going to be tipping nobody anything. That's crazy talk, okay? (laughs) I just went to the ball game a few days ago, and a beer was 20 effing dollars, okay? You know what I mean? And the guy standing there and literally he moved the, the beer from A to B <laughs> was about nine <laughs> inches. Yeah. And he's staring at me for a 20% tip. I'm like, dude, you moved the, the can nine inches into my hands. What? You want five bucks for that? Like, what the? I'm in the wrong business. I, I should just quit being an executive and I'm going to go, uh, you know, hand out cans at the ball game. Right. Uh, you know, but it's, it's insanity. But the thing is, at the end of the day, I understand what he's getting at. But it's never going to happen. And what these developers are going to start doing, excuse, not, excuse me, not the developers, the publishers are going to start doing is they've already starting to do it. They're going to find ways around that $70 yeah. by attacking your FOMO. And they've been doing it already. Look at the early access um, you know, charges. They're like, 
they're charging a hundred bucks now for early access, ninety dollars for early access, a hundred and ten. Uh, you know, Ubisoft, you got to remortgage your house, uh, whatever it is, right? So you got to do that in order to be able to get early access, and that is how they're getting that player base. Look at even Microsoft when they launched Forza Horizon Five in Game Pass, they still said, you know what, for an extra forty bucks, we'll let you play it a week early, and then you get the DLC. Yeah. And you know how many people did that? Like it was up, it was upwards of like a million or something. It was yeah. insane how many people bought into that, and that's how they're going to make up their money the other way the other way to do it skins microtransactions maybe not so egregious as like you know some of the you know some people are complaining about the dragon's dogma thing which is a little bit over the top because you didn't have to buy those but you know you could all do it in story anyways the point is is they're going to find ways around that 70 dollars. and i understand what me bar is talking about you know you get some of those games you're like you know what i would have paid 150 dollars for Last of Us 2, because I've played it four times. Right. I've platinumed it twice, and I'm going to platinum it a third time. You know what I mean? So, you know, it's the, the, those are the kind of... Sorry, no, sorry. I only did that one twice. I was, ta- I was thinking... I was going to say, Meg, Meg, bad example. We've bought that one actually four times. Uh, go ahead. Yeah, I know. Yes, yeah, no kidding. Yeah. yeah. So, like, you know what I mean? So, <laughs> th- th- I understand how they're doing that stuff, and that's where these remakes and these remasters and all that other stuff comes from. It all comes from the same place. And I see what Ibarra's talking about, but in the end, it's nonsense, never going to happen. But it was kind of cute because he's a funny guy, and I really like him. Yeah, no, I'm right there with you, and I know I know where his heart was at, and I think he was just yeah. saying what you said, that line you said where you, we get done with the game, and you're like, man, you love the game so much. It doesn't, like, forget the hours for a second, and you're like, man, I would have yeah. paid $100 for this. Right? You I would have paid $100 right, for, you like, say that. Ex- right. Yeah. No, I mean, experience that you go to work, and you talk to people who aren't in gamers, you're like, man, I just played this game, this and that, whatever, and you're talking to them. And like you're talking to people who don't even play games, but you're so excited or you've been so affected by it that you just like you just like you have to talk about it. You know what I mean? And right. it's just like that's the kind of thing where you can understand and say, you know what, I would have paid more for that. However, at the end of the day, we're paying four times the price for eggs right now. Okay, like not everybody's gonna be, <laughs> not exactly everybody's gonna be right. tipping developers an extra ten bucks right. because they're making 160 grand a year. Not gonna happen. You know what I mean? So, you know, something's going to break at some point, and it's coming sooner than you think. And that's why, by the way, all these big companies, Apple, Amazon, Google, Meta, and Microsoft, are all doing what they're doing with AI. Because that's going to be a whole different conversation that we're going to revisit when my stuff about AI comes Mm. to pass, which it will. And that's exactly what's going to be. You know, and again, like I said, people don't believe me. Go to your grocery store and stare at the 25 cash registers that used to be humans. Now it's all self checkout. <laughs> it's so true. You know Meg. what I'm saying? It's so, so true. You know what I mean? And now yeah. it's all self checkout. Now you got one. You got one uh, lady standing there watching you self check out your own stuff instead of the 25 humans that used to have jobs. But anyways, yes. folks. Hey, Meg, great it's to have awesome. you here. You can't. You kept me 18 minutes longer. Listen, you almost had me for Meg, the hour 30. Meg, I'm not yeah. even done mooching yet. If you get on that call and for some reason they're like, you know what? Unfortunately, tonight's not the night to have this discussion. Jump back on the show. All right, we'll do it like that. We'll see. <laughs> I've never done Moochie. Always uh, keep the door open. You know I'm always floating around that's right. somewhere. Anyways, boys, you guys have a good one, all right? I appreciate Chad, it, man. You guys Mag. are awesome as always. Everybody, hit the hey, like Mag. button on your way out, all right? All appreciate right, boys, it, have a good one. Too, Thanks, Mag. Right. Uh, so, Later, I mean, so, Eric, what do you think when you hear that, Eric? I mean, I, I, I mean we're going to jump to another subject real quick here. Uh, I just thought it was interesting because right before the show went live, I mean, it was just... Uh, you know, Mike was getting hit after hit after hit. A lot of people were just like, "What is? What are you?" T- you know, right. I don't know if you guys saw uh, that. I posted it so you can I take a the, look. I saw the tweet. I saw the yeah. tweet. Um, thing is, Mike's heart was in the right place. I got exactly what he was trying to say. It's like when you really, really dig something, you're really into stuff. It's like, damn. It's almost like when you see like Wario post like a game series you love that's like super cheap. Like, man, I wish I could buy that over again. That's how right. much I love that. Right? right. I love that. But game. I can't right. do it. Right. 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 Exactly. The problem is Mike picked Mike picked probably the worst place to share that thought. A place that has no concept of sarcasm. A place that has no concept of nuance. <laughs> like my boy Slow Mo points out, people read on a first grade level. They can't comprehend. They can't kind of just look at it and go, "Oh, I dig it. I get what he's saying." It has to now be the attack. Like, how dare you? Right. Right. How dare you? And like insist that I pay more. <laughs> that's like that's not what he was saying. He's saying that this shit is fire, and man, I would pay more if I had, if I could, because that's how much I appreciate it. Yeah, you know, I get what he was saying. I, you I just like, pick the worst place to go say it. I liked your example. Like, e, me and you will always kind of like uh, our, our, our uh, I'll say the Bioshock collection for me and you. E, we always talk about that slow mo. I know yeah. you, uh, with Borderlands. Like, if they came out with a Borderlands two unbelievable edition for twenty dollars, you know what I mean? I don't know whatever they would add to it that we don't already have already. Um, 
I own Borderlands on every console, every, on PC, everything. Like, but if they're like, but now it comes in this extra, you know, whatever. You're like, oh, I guess I got to grab, you know, grab that. But then you're like, no, nah, I don't really need it. Like you said, e, we don't really need it. You know what I mean? So I understand where his heart was. But really, when it comes down to it, the reason I kind of wanted to bring this up was not only the, you know, the, the, the issue that's going on online right now, but it was more along the lines of this. The, there, there does seem to be an issue. Brap got into it. With the money, the money issue, you know what I mean? Right now, so $70 games, everyone said that they were really upset with that. But now I'm starting, and I remember seeing people say, oh, guess what? We're going to be at a point of 80 or 90 or $100 games again. And at first, in the beginning of the generation, I was I like, mean, no way. But is that is Mooch, that something we're looking at, Brett? I mean, look, I, uh, I'll i say this. I mean, gaming uh, is... Hey, Mooch, Mooch, I got to run. Sorry, right, hey, Slow-mo, uh, guys, check over DPS, Thanks, 9 p.m. Uh, Slow-mo, right, thank slow here, buddy. All right, later, guys. Thanks, Slow-mo. Yeah, see you, man. Yeah, you know what's interesting, Mooch, is I uh, I've talked a lot about this on Brap that goes live every Wednesday night. Oh, nice plug, time. buddy. Nice plug. Thank you, thank you. Yeah. Um, you know, look, I, lu- uh, luxury. Um, I got I got it backwards. Gaming is a luxury hobby. It's an enthusiast hobby. It's not cheap. And I I didn't get to say this. I know Jeff was talking about you know people like getting priced out. Yeah, people. Yeah, what'd you say? Like golf? It's like golfing. <laughs> yeah, it is <laughs> like golfing. <laughs> Uh, try to uh, join a country club and tell me how much it costs. You know, it's not, it's not right. for everyone. And, and here's the thing. Like one thing, um, you know, Jeff, I think Jeff mentioned something about, you know, people who get priced out. Yeah. Some people will get priced out, but guess what? They are options for those people who don't want to pay the luxury tier price for a higher tier experience in triple A games. They're double A games. There's indie games. There's free to play games. They're games for all shapes and sizes of consumer. In the gaming landscape, I think part of the issue and some of the discourse I see on Twitter is that, and I don't disagree with slow mo, people can't read, um, but part of the issue is that people feel entitled to AAA games at a low cost, and these games cost hundreds of millions of dollars to make. I, I think what's probably going to happen, I think you'll probably see them figure out way more ways to monetize us and look if if the, the star wars thing with the the early access 3d early access yeah remember gears uh, not gears uh remember that um but gears 5 starfield did, did this gears, starfield did this. i thought gears 5 did as well no, but i could be wrong i think gears, does. They, they they've done it with pretty much on every yeah. big release they did it with gears they did it with forza, forza, forza horizon, horizon. Did it, yeah you know yeah yeah, yeah. And so someone tried it before Ubisoft and Microsoft did it with Starfield and it did actually Starfield actually did very well the early access. Um, I think part of the controversy around that was that, well, wait a minute, you told me that I'm in Game Pass and therefore I get day and date, but this game is actually coming out like a week early or whatever it was. So that's not technically day and date. And actually Ubisoft's not doing that. They're including um, Star Wars is part of their subscription service when the game actually goes mm-hmm. early access three days. But I think Blizzard um, did it too, Brad. Yeah, with Blizzard did it too. 4. Yeah, with Diablo it's 4. Yeah. There's been developer bottom line, but yeah, the developer that it's, it's yeah. not a new practice. But but here's but here's but here's the thing. If it didn't work, Eric, if it didn't work, they wouldn't do it. So they they tried it. It works. It works, and, and that's why they're doing it. Like they, if the juice isn't worth the squeeze, they're not going to do this stuff. But the they the market responded in a way. That says, hey, this actually, you know what? This does work. Like people, people value jumping in front of the in front of the line. And if you don't believe me, go to an amusement park. Ask, inquire about how much a speed pass cost. Yeah. Oh, good luck. You know? Yeah. I mean, yeah. I, I, I swear by speed passes now. I'll pay the hundred dollars <laughs> to jump the front of the line because I don't want to wait four hours. To well, ride one ride. Well, people- it's like it's like Jeff said with the games, right? You have to make something enthralling enough. The thing is, Brap, you're right. So you only get so much time in the amusement park nowadays, especially. And I'll use the 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 uh, 800 pound elephant in the room, right? When you got the or the mouse, I should say, with Disney. You go to Disney. Right, you've only got so much time in the park. Some of those lines are three hours long. Yeah. So it's like you have a choice. You pay more out of pocket to speed through the line, or you only get to ride like four or five, maybe five, you know, four uh, rides throughout the day. You know, so depending yeah. on you know what you're going, it, that that's the thing when it comes down to it, Brap. It really, it, that's, yeah, that's a good point. And the other thing I was going to mention too is, um, you know, part of yeah, I, I you know. Part of this is look, it's it's just a mature market now, and and it's not 
Uh, you know, Game Logic has said this quite a bit on Brap. He's like, the industry has been riding high on the hog. The gaming industry been riding high on the hog, especially the console industry or console. The the console uh, part of uh, part of the market has been riding high on the hog, and yeah, it's it's kind of leveled out now because and and not that there's no that there's no growth. I mean, I think when people say there's no growth, like there's not like probably another hundred million console gamers out there that no one that we haven't discovered yet. What and that's what they're saying. Like, and it's not that there's zero growth. I mean, there's going to be some growth with new people buying consoles, but it's going to be minimal. But they are still. I mean, if you look at some of the analysts, um, Deloitte, I know, has put out projections uh, for the console market. They're still anticipating revenue growth. So that's the thing. Even though it's a mature market, there's still money to be made. And I said this, I think, last week on Crossfire that one of the challenges of Microsoft has had is that they entered a mature market, or they actually entered at a pretty good time in the early 2000s, and then they really missed it big time with the Xbox One. They just never recouped from that. And now they're in a mature market, and they see this resurgence of Nintendo, and Sony's kind of dominate the high end of the market. And it's, it's just hard for them to compete. Well, uh, listen, we said it back in 2019 on the show. You guys know that, 2020. I said it. And then Phil said it on the that X-Cast show. You know, they, they lost the worst generation to lose. And that was because of the digital content that was coming with everybody. And that's why Sony has that stronghold right now. Yeah, that's, that was the ecosystem battle. Right, E? That's, that's basically yeah. the long and, and, and the short of it. But like you said, the revenue growth is there, Brap, for this generation. And, you know, we keep saying the PC market's growing. That's true. The one thing that I, 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 this is a question. It's not a statement. It's a question. And we're going to see, I don't think we're going to see it with the PS5 Pro either. Maybe we'll see it with the PS6. Maybe we'll see it with what Xbox is going to come out with in 26 or 27. And the question is, is if so many people are flocking to the PC market, and I know, I know the number one thing people say is, well, I can build a PC for $500. That's fine. That's fine. But like most people still want a, a decently competent PC, right? You're still spending somewhere between a thousand and fifteen hundred. Why why isn't Microsoft and Sony exploring having a PS5 powered type of console for this generation? And then if they made something like a like a super, you know, PS5 or super Xbox that was way above it, but then it would have cost instead of you have a five hundred dollar box and a thousand dollar box. Is that a way that maybe they can at least keep up with some of the PC parts that continues to cha change year in and year out, where they're waiting four or five years between, uh, you know, upgrades? Did you, did you say a thousand dollar uh console? Did I? Yeah, I'm asking the question. I'm asking. Oh, the question. okay. Yeah. Uh, but I mean, it would be know. it would be so. I don't know. What did they What did they say? They said that the Xbox and the P PS5 was. Uh, you guys can correct me if I'm wrong. Was equivalent to like a 2070. Is that true or is that not true? Can anybody... That was kind of like that was kind of what was yeah they were saying kind of. I don't know. I'm just I'm I'm. This is yeah. what was out there. Let's yeah. just, just for just for conversation. What if they sold you one that was like you know the cost? Maybe it wasn't a thousand. Maybe it's eight hundred dollars, and it was a I don't know a thirty eighty or it was a thousand dollars, and it was equi equivalent, not the same, but you know equivalent, the same, you know roughly a little under, a little over the the power of a thirty eight. I'm just asking, why don't they try to keep up with the Joneses on the console front? They don't. They, they're always coming in way under on the performance side than what's on the PC market. I just, I don't understand why they don't give the option. Do they think people won't buy it? If you say, if your answer to me is mm. mooks, they're not going to buy that. Well, then why is that same consumer that they're, they're scared they're losing building a PC for anywhere from a thousand to 1500. I think, I think mooch, when you start getting in the uh, console space, a thousand dollars, it's like, well, why, why would I just buy a PC at that point? Well, Brad, uh, not, not, that, not everybody is like the folks in the community and, and that are on Twitter and, and, and discuss things with us all the time. There's a lot of people that don't want to go to Newegg and order, you know, 15 yeah. to 20 parts and wire the thing and, you know, and get their thermal paste ready. You know, people don't, some people just want to buy a really powerful box and have it. Well, they could, they could do that too. I mean, you can buy could. the, the pre-built PCs but again, and isn't stuff. It, you know? Right. But isn't that an apples yeah. for apples? That's all yeah, I'm asking. I, yeah, I mean, I, I just, you know, I. It, it's kind of like, like it, I think that's kind of a when you when you well, start looking at a thousand dollar PC, it's like, okay, well, I mean, I'm sorry, console. I mean, I, I think the challenge is, is who's that for? Um, you know, is it 
is there is that is there that in between market between kind of that it's it's for the customer. mid to high end PC and console. I, I don't know, it's maybe. The, but well, these are all hypotheticals. But we were saying yeah. that the console market's losing customers. So who's it for, Brad? It's for the people that are leaving console for PC. That's what's that's what it's for. Oh yeah. I mean, but I mean, yeah. yeah I think it's just. I think the the tough value proposition there is if those people are leaving console to PC, right? What kind of PC builds are they going for? And if they're going mm. for the fifteen hundred dollar, two thousand dollar rigs, right? They may not. They may. And, and there's also. I mean, it's also not just you know, what's under the hood. It's also everything else that comes with it too. You know, it's, well, that's right. You know, that's you right. don't have to pay for online on PC. That's right. To play games. You have the steam store, which everyone loves. Um, you have the, you know, PC just no. you have the flexibility of PC too. That's the other thing. Like we, we have some of that in consoles, but like, but console is, is it today as flexible in terms of how you play the game in terms of performance and settings like, I still it's just think, not there with PC yet. I, I, I agree with that, but I, I, I think that ultimately people still like the fact to go to the store, buy a console, take it out of the box, plug it in, and play it. And, you know, I mean, you can do that. Like you said, you can totally do that right now with a PC build, the pre-built, but it's, it, it, you're, you're, you're typically spending somewhere around $1,000 for a, a good PC. And it's, it, it's, listen, I've, I've had it myself. I've changed out a card. I had a, you know, I had something go wrong with it. I had to get another part and take it. You know, it's like, I, I, and that happens with your console, but you just get, you know, you get yourself a warranty. You go back to the store here. I, I don't know if it's exactly the same since I built mine. My warranties are up now when my parts, if a part blows on my PC, I'm just buying a new part. So it is what it is. Um, but I don't know. I, I, it's just a question. I don't know why they don't have a more expensive tier console. I just I don't see why they don't do these. These mid gen ones aren't necessarily what I'm talking about either because they're kind of like a half step, right, Brap? I don't think these like a PS5 Pro doesn't. I, I know that's not going to be that's not next gen. No, it's no, it's, it's it's kind of a half. Yeah, you know, I don't yeah, know. It's like an, an in between, <laughs> you know. I mean, I, I I don't know, man. I don't know, like, again, I think again we we're moving away from what the console was always for, you know, and and that was definitely in an era in a world where, you know, I think you could say, and correct me if I'm wrong, PC was still like a niche type thing, yeah. But it's definitely becoming more of a going beyond just the enthusiast, you know, if uh, because gaming has gone beyond just like the niche and the enthusiast, you know, there's people who are definitely more interested in it. But I still think, and it may not be like a huge pool or a, as big a pool as it was, you know, as we were coming up, but I, I definitely think there will always be a pool for somebody in a console realm. I just think the console mm -hmm. concept itself is going to evolve and change into something else. Yeah. You mm -hmm. know, um, what I, that is, I, I don't know. Well, I think that's, um, Eric, the that's, advent of like broadband getting better, you know. Well, that's what I'm saying, though, Eric. I, think I, I agree with you, though, Eric. That, that's what I'm saying. If the console yeah. is to evolve, it has to evolve and keep up with the PC. People are leaving console right. to go to PC. Now, Brap, the one thing Brap said that I don't know when or if that'll ever happen, but playing on PC, you don't play, you don't pay a monthly online fee, you know what I'm saying? Or a yearly fee. You know, you yeah. you you, you, but, you get you play multiplayer games for 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 what you're already paying for your your internet at home. So that's true. That's something that that they haven't decided to take away yet, but but other than that, the the main problem people are saying is, I'll give you an example, and this segues right into Hellblade 2. You guys see it on screen right now, and it's a subject I have for you guys. Is like myself personally, I'm I'm not gonna play Hellblade. I'm gonna play Hellblade 2 on my PC. And that's not because I didn't want to play it on my Xbox, but it's the same reason I played Starfield on my PC. And you guys know I'm a console. You guys, anyone who follows me, anyway, I'm always on my consoles every yeah. night. But like I'm gonna, if a game is drastically going to perform better on PC, then I'm that's where I'm gonna take, you know, you take your talents <laughs> to to that to that platform. So I'm gonna play Hellblade Two, where I'll be able to play it at 60 frames and probably a better resolution with my PC. So uh, right. that's, that's not a, you know, I, it's that's that's just a matter of of wanting to play the better version of the game. Now, if you have a better version of the game, but it's not as big of a difference. Or I have to wait two years. I'm not going to wait like like Final Fantasy Rebirth, right? Or Final Fantasy Remake, if you guys wanted. You got to wait a certain time for Remake to come out on PC, 
right? So it's like I didn't want to wait, so I play it on the console, Eric. That's 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 that situation. But what are you guys going to do when it comes to something like Hellblade Two? Are you guys going to be playing it on PC? Are you going to play it on console, or or is it just not your bag? Um, I'm playing it on the Series X only because I haven't I've not yet built a gaming PC. So, but if I had the option, I'd probably I would. Yeah, I'd pay, I would play it on a PC, you know, to get the 60 frames per second, which, again, leans back into... Well, before we go to that, I wanted to touch on this point that there, there is still the market for people who don't care about any of this shit. You know, I talk to them all the time. I have friends that are like, I don't even know what you... I talk to them about, like, frames per second stuff. They're like, I don't even know what you're talking about. You know, because mm-hmm. they just take it at face value. Well, you know, that- there will always be people like that. You know, we... Again, the small sample size of you know the, the back and forths on Twitter or, or whatever we we we've this, we've gone to the point now where we've skirted the line of PC talk and console talk because we've had options we've had you know settings in console which is something we've never had before you know uh, last gen and this gen you know you you know the advent of the console was it is what it is you got what you got and you didn't really talk about you know frame per second options or quality options or graphic options or whatever it is it was what it was mm-hmm. but that's not the reality of where the small a small segment is anymore right right, right. but there is still that segment who kind of lives in that world of uh like the matrix moves uh, ignorance is bliss they don't know i, I kind of wish i was in that world with them sometimes <laughs> you know because it's like you, you know the conversations back and forth do get old but to move back into what you were saying before no if i could i would play hellblade on a pc you know for the frame for a second option but again that kind of there that also bleeds over into the bs of twitter where you know microsoft has put themselves in this position or this thing to be talked about nobody people don't want you to talk about it they want you to just kind of accept you know that they said well it's going to be 30 or 50 i don't see the big deal well the big deal is it was made a big deal of at the start of the generation and then you and now the conversations move to well it's all so it's all hardware at this point it's like well guys you know we keep kicking the can which one is it it's like it's okay for people to be vocal about the game being locked at 30 when the company that was all about power until they created a series s talked about power right and every content creator ran with t-flops so that's going to be a part of the conversation just deal deal with that you know, does it mean Hellblade is going to look terrible and play terrible at 30 frames? No, it doesn't mean that at all. I'm no, still going to no, play it. No. I'm going to rock, and we're going to sit on Crossfire and talk about it. Yeah, Eric, if I didn't because, have this PC, yeah. I would be playing on my Series X. Absolutely. Yeah, we're going to play the game. I'm not sitting. Absolutely. But that's, but that's the thing. That goes back to kind of what we were saying before, like with what Ibarra said. People can't talk nuance. They can't talk in between the lines of what things really are Mm -hmm. the reality is these things were said the monster that eats monsters it does this and this and that but it is very ironic that that's not really the talk anymore because they created a baby brother right right you know the conversation is moving now into well no 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 this is this this is all old hardware at this point i do find it be the case but it's but again you got the developer from naughty dog (laughs) no i'm sorry naughty dog from ninja theory and he's saying it's the cinematic effect and blah, 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 blah. And this is what we want. But if that is the truth, then why isn't that, if that is your vision, then why mm-hmm. isn't that the vision on PC? You could lock it there, but you know that's not going to happen because people have the option. See, that brings up the whole point too, Eric, what you were saying a second ago, what we were also talking about earlier on the show is we haven't even tapped the power of the Series X. Here we are, we have, uh, guys, and I'll be very clear, Redfall launched at 30 frames. It did get a patch for 60 frames, so I'll say that. Starfield is still 30 frames on the Series X. Hellblade is going to be sub 4K, and it's also going to be running at 30 frames. So we haven't tapped the potential of the Series X. So the answer is make a brand new, more powerful Xbox. I I don't, I don't kind of, I don't, I'm not following. That's what we said at the beginning of the show. Right. Here we go again. Here we go. We're we're about to leap forward again, guys. You're like, you're, you're already seeing the content creators jump on it. Leap forward. We're in quicksand we right go. now. Yeah, here we go, everybody. Here we go. Yeah, put your seatbelt on. <laughs> you know, it's shout out to Ocelot. By the way, here's some uh, super. By the way, shout out to Lotus Esprit. By the way, I'm going to say Esprit, but Lotus, let me know how to actually pronunciate that correctly in the chat. Please spell it. I want to make sure I'm saying it right. Lotus, thank you for the five gifted subs that you gave to the chat again. 
Outstanding. Again, Mash is here. Mash gifted subs earlier, 10 gifted subs. You guys are awesome to keep giving to these people and let them enjoy the channel. I love that you guys are enjoying the channel. Guys, use the emotes. Have some fun out there. Uh, Ocelot says 946p at 30 FPS is bad, but only 1v1 melee combat? Question mark. Yeah, so that's the thing. He's not, it's not necessarily even, it, it, there's a lot of question marks. I know people are saying Unreal Engine 5. I, that's just something that I won't comment on. I'm not a developer. I don't pretend to be. But I would say if that was the choice and I'm sitting there and I'm Microsoft and I, I know they like to have a hands off, right? Brap and Eric, they love to have my hands off. But I would say, guys, we, say. we have promised our customer that this box can do this output. We haven't really done it yet. So maybe don't use Unreal Engine 5 if you can't do this with your project. Use something else. I don't know. I mean, that's something I would just think about as we go into the fourth year of the Xbox's existence out there. Shout out to Domino Zero as well. He says, loving well, my Pulse Elite, Mooch. It feels like a big upgrade from the PlayStation, uh, the base plus PlayStation headset. It really is, Domino. I use it all the time uh, when I'm gaming on PlayStation 5 now. Eric, go ahead. I didn't mean to take well, the mic well, from you. Well, no, I was going to say, Mooch, there are, there are some out there, mutuals of ours, who, you know, the, the, the thing is, it's always defense first, never really truly really having a true conversation about it, what it all really means, right? So the, the, so the defense is, or perhaps you've seen it is, well, they don't mandate to their developers what should be. Well, why not? Yeah, why not? <laughs> you know, like, um, and again, we're not developers. We're just having a conversation because it would be a boring podcast if we didn't. That's do right. This, you Let's, know, we expand again, upon it and not mean ask questions. Yeah, and 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 before anybody in the chat goes crazy, just understand this: like I have loved Ninja Theory before the acquisition, before and a mm -hmm. lot of people found out about them and went to their Wikipedia and said, "Oh, yeah, okay, they're, that, that's great. That's a great acquisition." You know, so I think they're a capable developer, we're, and we're going to see what Hellblade is going to be all about. And it seems like the previews are, have been pretty hot. But again, I don't. I go by what I do because we've seen the preview train before. <laughs> you know yeah we saw with redfall people were like jumping out the window oh my god this is gonna be this and then none of that was that i'm not saying it's gonna be the case with hellblade but again you were you were sold on at one point it was all in the series x it's the monster that eats monsters and then they pulled back from that right when they decided they had to make a series s right and i always felt like the series s was there to compete numbers wise with the switch Mm. entry level type thing mm. whatever the case may be yeah. right yeah yeah but then you saw and again we're, we're gonna we're gonna kind of jump into the whole hardcore base thing the base that was all about power and, the, and it's gonna do this and it's gonna do that decided to acquiesce and it was all and we have to accept the series s and it, it is it's doing numbers is this 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 and this so microsoft sees it why would they why would they say anything different good point yeah, why would they? That's, yeah. that's the whole thing. And yeah. I like how you said with the entry point as far as the Switch is concerned. But I mean, realistically, mm -hmm. I really think they... Uh, the, the, the idea, if you go through and scroll through, which I haven't done in a while now, you scroll through Game Pass and you take a look at everything. There's I, Are there certain games that are third-party games that got there after a certain period of time that are, are power-intensive? Sure. But there's a lot of smaller games in Game Pass. And people are getting Game Pass, and they don't necessarily need to have the five hundred dollar console, right? So that's why they went ahead and they did. Right. But the problem is, is, it really did backfire. But again, they have a lot of hardware out there right now, Brap. You know, that's that's the one thing when we're talking about um, uh, Hellblade Two right now. We haven't tapped the potential, Brap, of of these consoles we currently own. I I don't know if once you know August or June or July comes and they want to do a showcase and they say, hey, guys, guess what? We've got a new console for you. I mean, Brap, you, you're you currently playing majority of your Xbox games, I believe, on PC, aren't you, Brap? Well, yeah. I mean, PCs, if you look, I, I'll, I, I've i been saying this for a long time, Mooch. If you want the definitive experience on Xbox, you have to have a PC. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, like, like uh, Hellblade 2 will not be locked to 30 FPS on PC. I mean, well, let me just, because I know someone's going to be like, what are you talking about, Brap? <laughs> you know, <laughs> everyone can play there, you know, 60 yeah, FPS. You, you'll need a 4090. You know, look, <laughs> uh, look, the point is you'll have the options to tweak the visual settings and to 
you know, scale the, you know, the, 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 the FPS, things like that. Like the, you, you don't have those options on console. So my point being is that if you want those options, you want the best experience for Xbox. Yeah. I think it's on PC. It's one of the reasons why I started PC gaming. Once Xbox was like, look, we're going to start doing games day and date on PC. I was like, well, uh, I don't really don't need Xbox. And then, you know, once, uh, you know, once they started releasing games that, um, weren't taking advantage of the series X, I was like, why do I even need a Series X? I have a PC. Yeah. So, um, but I, I, I think with Hellblade too, I think it's going to be a good looking game. Like I, everyone, right, absolutely. Uh, most, yeah. Absolutely. Like I, I'm, that's, you know, I think the the letterboxing is going to um, help that yeah. game. Um, kind of reminds me of, uh, what was the game, Eric, that came out PlayStation 4 that had letterboxing? That was the Order looked, 1886. Yes. Yeah, the, yes. Order, the Order, yeah. And that game looked really good at the time. They so eventually, I, I, they eventually removed the letterboxing. Okay. Yeah, I think this is going to be a graphical showpiece showcase. Um, but like, you know, it's my my only thing with uh, with with the Xbox is that, um, especially with the Series X, I I feel like they just never they just really didn't take advantage of it. I don't think like for all the marketing and, and this is so wait. So, but Brap, that's the yeah. thing. So I, Brap, I, I haven't I, taken advantage of any, of any of the, no, yeah, that's what I mean, I'm, that's what I'm going back to the one X. That's what I was going to say. That's what Luke is getting at. It's like, yeah. we're going to do it all. We're doing, we're, yeah, we're watching yeah, it already. Yeah, yeah. starting it over. They're starting so the train over already. Yeah, like Mooch, when Sarah Bond was like, oh, we're going to have like the most, it's going to be the biggest like technological leap. I'm like, oh God, like, don't say that. Don't like Sarah Bond. Don't say that because you guys have a history of just like over hyping and then under delivering and it's like stop. but it's not even it's not even that though it's not even that it's it's the fact that we on paper people will, i think even digital foundry said it right on paper the xbox series x is more powerful than the playstation 5 it but, is it absolutely but, but is look at, but look at how the generation went out I'm, I'm not talking about sales i'm talking about just performance the yeah, playstation well. right it's the same listen it's it's if you have a uh you have a corvette right and I'm, these are a little bit old school tactics or going against a, a Porsche or BMW on a straight line, right? On paper, that Corvette is going to kill it. It's going to have, it's going to absolutely tear it. The minute you add a sharp turn to that conversation, it depends on how the thing is, is it, it, the performance across the entire board, right? If, if it only wins in a straight line, well, that, okay, you got that W. But what about how it performs around turns and how it performs in bad weather and how it performs you know i'm just trying to say to you, like give you an example i believe the playstation 5 was probably better overall engineered but i think the xbox is, is the stronger console on paper right by parts so that's the one thing so it's like if they're making the biggest technological leap and it's gonna be the strongest console again that those words are kind of they're saturated they're a little bit more watered down as we go pr from generate from the xbox one x to the series x to what this next one will be that's why i think the handheld is probably the most interesting thing i think that's their next that's when 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 grub says they have to do something that the their competition currently isn't doing or not doing yet you know i mean you could say switch is doing it but i'm saying they want to do it on a scale that's probably what much more powerful than a steam deck i think that's interesting that would be something i would at least I'd be interested to see what they have. Look, but, I, I'll say this, Mooch, it, it, and I heard you guys talking about this with Grub. Yeah, what do you think? It, it, at the end of the day, and, and this is my frustration with the X, not not all the Xbox community, but a lot of the Xbox influencers, content creators. It's never about today. It's never about that. How was your ROI today on that investment that you made on that plastic box? And it's always, oh, wow, well, you know, they're going to release this handheld. It's going to yeah. be a game changer. Yeah. Look, it, it may be a great piece of technology, but at the end of the day, they have to deliver games yes. that drive people to the platform. Right. They have, and look, I, I'm not saying they don't have games. Obviously, they do. They have some good first party games. But do they have games with... that drive you to the platform, Brap? Yeah, but and I don't but we're know. Talking if like, to... like Avowed, Avowed doesn't really. Of every yeah. time I see Avowed, it looks it looks worse. Like I, mean, I, I, I don't like I don't think that Avowed is going to do it. Is Hellblade's probably going to like you say be it's even with all these things we're saying with the you know the the lower resolution and the thirty frames. I think it's going to look great, but that kind of game doesn't bring millions of people to the platform. So it's not going to be well, that game. Well, that's the thing, which it's got to be a game that 
is going to move the needle for Microsoft, for the industry. Yeah. That's going to be in the conversation of game of the year. As as much as as much as people bellyache about the Keeleys, it's funny, like they don't pay attention to the other award shows. No, it's true. Yeah. Oh, you know, it's, it's Sony bias. Meanwhile, Spider Man two cleaned house at the GDC Awards, which by the way, is an award show where the where the where Microsoft's peers within the gaming industry, development industry, are voting on the winners of this game and are nominating and then voting for the winners. I mean, are we are we going to then jump to the conclusion and say that developers in the entire industry is biased against Xbox? I mean, right. like it's just that's the and that, so that's what we're talking. We're talking about like games that are in the conversation um, for game of the year for you know, uh, innovation, moving the needle, you know, you know, where, where, you know, the industry is ranting and raving about a particular game, like the way they were with, um, Spider-Man too. And with like Baldur's Gate three, I know Baldur's Gate's a multi-plat, but, but I'm just using the, the zeitgeist of that game. Yeah. You know, th that's the kind of stuff they need. And I mean, you got to remember, like it took one game to put Microsoft on the map and that was Halo. I mean, and and that that formula hasn't changed per se. I know, but that's I, what it comes guys, down to, right? And I know yeah. we were talking about. I, I thought Eric and, and Slow Mo made some great points, like like with, about their gears opinions. It, 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 but the thing is, is like you really can't get rid of gears right now. Like gears is is it is a temple. Fr it's a franchise that they need, right? Like it's 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 important to keep gears, and gears has to get much better. Because right now, when you think, uh, ask anybody on the street, they, need, you, they have to evolve it, man. Like they could still have that potential, but they, they have to evolve it. They can't feel funky oh, e, like that anymore. One hundred percent, e. something. Yeah, one hundred percent. But Eric, gears is one of those things when they were like, "We'll make it better or get rid of it." I I don't think they can get rid of it. Like, what in the world? By the way, shout out to Javier. Appreciate that. I see all you guys out there, guys. Great show today. I appreciate all you guys being here. Shout out again to Lotus, C Mash out there, Brian East, uh, Wizard. Appreciate you guys all being here. Just wait. Um, I think when it comes down to it, though, they need to listen to the audience. Like you said, the Halo multiplayer like just kind of died off really quick. The Gears Five multiplayer just died off really quick. And these were the games that kept people on Xbox night after night after night. Right? Tournaments, friends getting on. I know I did. I played Gears multiplayer back in the day forever. I, I barely touched five and four multiplayer. It was eh. You know, it, was, it just wasn't, it didn't keep up with the Joneses. The speed isn't there. Like, I, I literally will play two, three games of Warzone whenever I possibly get a chance. Just because, for me, I, I it, there's still that adrenaline, dude. Got like three wins last weekend. I'm screaming, like, just so pumped. Like, it's just the adrenaline is so into that game. It's great. You know, where like, e e Brap, I know you played a lot of Halo multiplayer, but I mean, there are times you just drop your controller at the end. You're like, yeah, I did it. You know, you were, you, you <laughs> yeah. know, you know, you were like, oh, hold on a second. My hot pocket's done. I'll be right back, guys. Um, <laughs> my hot pocket. You know what I mean? It's like, it's. <laughs> come on, hey, don't, don't insult my culinary taste I apologize, like Brap. I, I, listen. I, uh, come on. <laughs> I went to hot pockets. I'm sorry, buddy. <laughs> maybe, maybe, maybe 25 years ago. I mean, I, I, yes, yeah. I'm dating myself. I apologize. Yeah. Um, but yeah, that that's kind of the whole thing when it comes to that. Uh, quick question for you guys on the same con same idea. Sea of Thieves is going to launch on PS5 soon, guys. Now, is this? I guess I'll start. Uh, Brap, real quick, is this going to be a hit? It, it it might be. I mean, like the. I mean, it was it was up there in terms of um, like pre order games for PlayStation. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, it, it actually that's that's actually believe it or not like as as much as I, I, god mooch i always i always remember our uh our that one playthrough we had with uh it was the pirates of the caribbean dlc oh yeah me, you crap and, and, and worry I think. worry work yeah don't yeah. have to worry worry and, crap it was yeah funny and i just never forget <laughs> <laughs> crap I'm like who's aries <laughs> who's aries yes <laughs> yeah. so um great. but uh yeah i mean that game has actually done pretty well for for Xbox, it has, um, yeah, and it could. I mean, it, it could potentially do well um, on on PlayStation. You know, uh, it's again. Yeah, it's you know what's funny. You know what's funny about that, Brad. Well, yeah. Again, we talk about like the the night guys of, of Twitter. I saw people saying, you know, like about the pre order numbers of of uh, CFD. Like, see, see, people wanted this game. 
they, they you know they 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 shit on it. They said whatever. They really want it. Yeah, they probably shit on it. They probably they definitely wanted it. But again, it's that thing of like Phil said, losing the generation that they shouldn't have lost. The people are like I like that game. That looks cool. I would like to play it, but I'm not buying an Xbox to play it. Right. You know, like I'm over here. Yep. And I'm not buying. I'm not making. I'm not building a PC. So I'm not doing that. I'm over here on PlayStation. It's not here. So yeah. Yeah, g- gamers confront that it looked waggy, look whatever. You no, know, they want to have some fun with it. They just weren't willing to buy an Xbox to do so, and that goes vice versa. You are where you are, you know. And it, it's like the same thing. You like I always find it funny when dudes post pictures of you know their dusty console. Like, like I'm like that's not deflection. You think it is? That just means you you live in squalor. You <laughs> yeah, clean that shit up. Yeah, that's not a you very know? yeah. That's not a good look. Yeah, yeah, and they go look at look at it. It's collecting dust. Well, well, why wouldn't it? You said you bought it for the exclusives, and both consoles only produce so many exclusives at a time. So yeah, why wouldn't it be collecting dust? It's not your main platform. I know a lot of people that have PlayStations, and especially in the console wars and things like that. I'm I'm chomping at the bit to know uh, what exactly will be the next game that Xbox does bring over because they're watching, you know, Sea of Thieves very closely. I think they're watching this well, ex- really closely, Brett. And if this uh, thing does even Starfield, uh, yeah, yeah, I, I mean, think it, Star, I think Starfield's probably next. I mean, look, according to Christopher Dring, GameIndustry.biz, he said the majority of Xbox games will be going to other platforms. Th- that's correct, but I mean, so I think, yeah, I think see if these probably. Be I, one think, of those, yeah. I think this is just me. I'm spitballing and throwing it out there, and I'm not the first to say this, but I'm just going to say it here. You know, I think. It'll be Starfield. I think um, people, if it is happening, shouldn't delude themselves that it's not that it's all it's being worked on like right now in preparation for whenever that big DLC hits because mm-hmm. that's like the perfect time because everyone will be talking. I think. You I know, think so. I think you're right on that. E. I think also uh, wondering uh, because it still doesn't say exclusive. I'm. Are you guys all but convinced now that Blade will be a multi plat day one? I was convinced of that the, the, the day they announced it and would not <laughs> say what it was doing. That was like the can- canary in the coal mine that something else was going on. Mm-hmm. And then, you know, and then we led up to the business event and all that stuff. But yeah, 100% Blade is going to be a multi flag game. Yo, shout out again to Lotus. I want to say thanks for the gifting subs left and right. Lotus, thank you so much. Guys, please do me a favor. We still have 400 people here. And I want to say thank you to every single one of you guys. Honestly, tremendous amount of uh, support on the channel guys please hit the like button 400 people here i would love to just see the likes just skyrocket that would be absolutely amazing so thank you guys i appreciate it i do have a couple super chats here though real quick uh shout out to ocelot he says i haven't been swayed to buy uh, the last two xboxes though so he's saying he won't even you know if he hasn't been swayed to buy the last two why would the announcement of a new console make a difference shout out to ocelot uh is it slam lee he says uh sony and nintendo Either reinvent their IP, God of War, Zelda, retire their IP, and make new ones. Xbox needs to do this instead of relying on old IP. So, you know what, Lee? I agree with you. But again, we've kind of talked about this. We won't go down that road again. But it's okay to bring in something new and still revitalize and refresh your Halos, your Forzas, and your Gears. There's nothing wrong with that at all. Nothing wrong yeah, with can, that at can all. I say, can I say this move? Because I think I, I think that these these IPs still have value. I just think they need to think of other things to do with them, right? And um, like Slow-Mo, Slow-Mo and I have talked about this, and Brad, you remember we talked about this, when, when they were saying, or when we were about to get like whatever Halo and uh, Infinite was going to be, right? Mm-hmm. And I said, and Slow-Mo said the same thing, like, I think, I'm not a game developer, but I was like, I think a good idea that could give it a, some fresh legs is if you're not going to move away from Master Chief, because Brad was always like a, an advocate for killing him, <laughs> like he's got to go, right? But um, I said, allow people to create their Spartan. You know, now that opens you up to selling armors and whatever you want to do, go for it. Let people create their own Spartan to be the protagonist of the game that goes on the adventure with Chief. If you absolutely have to have Chief and he has to be a part of this thing or whatever, mm-hmm. Allow people to be like their own thing. And then that carries over into the multiplayer. And you you get them invested in their Spartan. Their Spartan is a part of the whole. You know? But I don't know. And then, I don't know. I, again, you know, 
not to pick on Halo, but people were kind of saying, you know, like, well, this looks like this looks like old Halo to me when we were kind of saying this looks weird. Like when they first announced it, it's like something looks off. Yeah. And remember people were telling us Mooch, like, oh, you don't know what you're talking about. You don't know Halo. That looked fantastic. And I'm like, and it wasn't until they delayed it that people, oh, that's the right move. That's, that's right. That's right. It took that's it took smart. the the <laughs> back know? right, exactly. That took the backlash uh, the backlash, pardon me. Because in all honesty, Eric, that's 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 the problem. Is that game wasn't ready. They had to delay it a year. So the Xbox Series X came out with no games. Then you had or no first party games. Let me just say that. I apologize. And then you also had the the, the issue with um you know Starfield being delayed a year. Now again, Sony. I'm not saying that they're perfect by no means, but they've legitimately revitalized God of War. I mean, I personally prefer. I like. I like the newer God of Wars. I do like the older ones too. There's nothing. There's, you can't say anything bad about the older ones. They were great. They were great. But yeah. I like the new style. I really, really do. Um, I like what they're doing yeah. with. Like, you could. You could make the argument that in two moves that they. You know. Maybe they need to start looking at moving away from Kratos. They did the revamp. They brought him into a new generation. They, you know, but right. you don't want to keep going and striking that, you know, because eventually you get to the point like this is it's getting sad. And I think that's kind of where they are with some things. Yeah, you know, I, it's like I wouldn't be surprised. It's kind of sad seeing old Baird and old Cole. It's good for fanfare, but it's kind of yeah, you know, how long are we going to keep rocking with these guys? So you can go ahead and do that, but you have to be. I, I think maybe doing a prequel. And going back to when mm-hmm. Marcus was young, uh, Dom was still alive, how they met up, how the invasion began. Yep. Like, like to get, like, that would be something that brings, I don't care, you're, that's going to get new audiences, and that's definitely, definitely going to get veterans. I mean, listen, yeah. guys, all you guys, the guys that are in the chat right now, Gears goes and does a, a prequel, brings Marcus and Dom back, and that whole thing. They do three from the beginning. They kind of listen. We're kind of doing it just like uh, you know George Lucas here. We'll go back to the beginning and, and and actually do a one two three over you know before the original one two three. That would be insane. I mean, I wouldn't stop talking about it. I would be very excited. I mean, don't get me wrong; it would have to be good, but I'm sure it would be. Um, but that's the mm-hmm. other thing too. I can't. I think Crap said it last week, and I. Or uh, yeah, it was last week when crap was on. Crap said something like, uh, "I don't even know who's running the coalition anymore." We don't even no, know. I, I, you know, I mean, either. that doesn't mean that the name hasn't been revealed. But I'm saying like they don't. The coalition's been kind of underground. Like you, you don't even know who's real. Who's like the 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 head? Like, you know, once Rod Ferguson left, you know, it was just like nobody knows. So it's like yeah. I mean, I, now people are saying you're not ready. I hate these one liners. Oh, you're not ready for this. I'm like, dude, we've been ready. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I was like, there's no way, there's no better way to sign your death certificate than like pushing narratives like that. Just let it be what it is. Like, hey, there's something new. Yeah, we've been ready for Gear Six. We bet. Yeah, yeah. Like, what, we, five came out in twenty. Since the one X. Yeah, twenty nineteen, right? Yeah. So it's like, we're, yeah, we're ready. <laughs> you guys aren't ready. Yeah, we are. <laughs> you know. Everybody, I mean, I, I, we we've been waiting like ten years. <laughs> it feels like forever, and, and, and it's yeah. like, and, and again, it's, it goes back to what Eric said. You know, we've had we got these consoles in our house. I don't feel like I've gotten the true potential out of this console. But yeah, we're ready, Coalition. If you're the ones that's going to drive it home, bring it home. You know, bring it home. Let's go. But the thing, I hope, I, I hope it's not going to be. I hope Gear Six doesn't come out in 2026. I'm hoping Gears comes out. Shit. If if not this holiday, bring it out next holiday. I don't know. I mean, I'm being, you know, I'm being, I'm just excited for the game. But I mean, uh, shout out to uh, Silent Murky says, make a great game and the gamers will come to Xbox. Exactly, Silent Murky. That's what we're saying. Every time. You know, every they, time. Every gamers, time. There's a, there's a couple of consistent with gamers. Gamers have amnesia. Yep. Short term <laughs> so the memory. They were complaining yeah. about for six months at a time. If, if it gets fixed, I mean, I mean, Mooch, I mean, correct me if I'm wrong, but CD Projekt Red was dead. They were done when they released Cyberpunk. It was over. Yeah. Yeah. Is it still like that? You still hold them, you still hold them accountable for that, but all the, the fixes and, and, Nobody and the repairs talks that they about put in how, that game, yep. you, all you hear about now is how fired it is. Oh, it's amazing. It's amazing. People are using right? it in references. They're using it as benchmarks. Yeah. It's the gamers have amnesia. It's the good, best. Uh, good, uh, yeah, <laughs> it's the best game that's ever come out, Eric. <laughs> Everyone right. forgot about that year of absolute misery. I'm sure the I'm sure yeah. the devs didn't forget. Shout out to no, J. You, you know what I mean. Shout out to J. Row Forty Nine. Yeah. I appreciate that. Thrifty PS Gamer. He sent four ninety nine in super chat. No message, but Thrifty, thank you. I appreciate that. 
Uh, Babor, he says, I think Phil already knew that Starfield was mid. I, you know, listen, I, I don't, you don't know who to blame with That's Starfield. I, yeah, exactly. I can't point the finger there. Uh, he says, uh, believe me. Some people is fantastic. I mean, it's great. I mean, it's not, it's not my cup of tea, but I mean. It's not it, mine either. Gaming, I, I've got 30 art, hours. Art is man. It's all there, it is. You know? It is. Absolutely. So I got 30 hours into Starfield. It's just, it didn't do it for me. But Brap played I 15 like. And I was like, yeah. Yeah, Brap played like, I don't know, 100 hours or something. Brap. Brap seemed to li- at least like it. I don't uh, think he I loved play, it. I played like, uh, oh, but not not quite a hundred, but over 50, 50 or something over 50, like that. Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, I finished. The you game. liked it. It was okay. It was okay. I don't know. How, I don't know. God bless you. Yeah, um, I mean, it was. I, mean, I, I was like, I was like, this is this is paint drying right now. <laughs> yeah, I, just I also put a, I also put about four hundred hours into Baldur's Gate three, though. That's amazing. I yeah, mean, you, but but then again, on that one, man. that that's that won more awards than. Anything I can honestly think of. I mean, that thing, it's cleaned house at every award. Yeah, I mean, it, it's such a great game. Great storytelling. Great character development. I mean, it's, uh, yeah, it's, it's just amazing. But game. you know, it's like, it's like Pentiment. Like, I, I really enjoy Pentiment. Yeah, you love, it, right? yeah, you like Pentiment. You were ranting and raving about it on Twitter. But it's not everybody's thing. So, you know, so I know I've had people, like, look at me like, really? I'm like, yeah. I mean, when they first announced that game, I was like, that art style is wild to me. I don't know what's going on there. Mm-hmm. And then I played and I was like, this shit is deep. It's layered. It's, I don't know what to say. It's got a, it's got a great story. And it's, a, it, it's not a game that was going to move the needle, but I don't think that's what it was ever meant to do. But, you know, if you're looking at variety, yeah, that was definitely there. But, well, like, own, but like you say, the vari- varieties, Xbox is, is definitely, they have the, there's variety. I mean, they have yeah. a lot of different types of games. I just think like what Jeff was saying earlier in the show and what we all kind of alluded to throughout the show is they don't have that like that game that drives you to be like, you know what I need? Like, do you need to go get an Xbox? And I don't mean this like, you know, because you're going to go, no, Mooch, I can play it on. I can play it on PC. I don't mean that. But like, I need to go buy an Xbox. I got to play Pentiment. No, I need an Xbox. I really, really want to play Grounded. No, you know what I mean? So it's like they have they have the different types of games. They have quite... Uh, a, a unique portfolio, but are they games that drive you to go spend five hundred dollars? I don't know. Like that's it's kind of a rhetorical question, guys. You know, but I mean, you know, but I'll, I'll say this. I'll say this too, and I know people probably get a, have gotten annoyed when I say it. Um, like with sports, like basketball, football, mm-hmm. with music, you know, hip hop, you know, whatever the case may be, foot like shoes, like Jordan, whatever. What are the things that push those things? What what may, what gives people the fever? Like, they got to be involved. Like, they got to be down with it. Like, what does it? It's the culture that's involved with it. Yes. Gaming is a culture, right? And then within that culture, you have to cut out your niche of what you're about, who you are, what you do, what, what, what drives people towards you. And I honestly believe Nintendo and Sony have a culture around their product that makes, that gives people a thing that they're like, I got to be a part of that in some way. And I feel like Microsoft had that Mm -hmm. with the OG. They did. And halfway through the 360, go back and watch movies from like 2000, you know, like around the 2000s or whatever. Mm -hmm. Most movies and shows were featuring Xbox. Yep. It was like everywhere. I mean, Grandma's Boy was focused around Xbox. That's right. Because it was it was a thing where and we all we we lived it and again maybe it's, maybe it's the old man thing of you had to be there but we lived it where it was that thing of who's doing a console Microsoft the whack computer guys they're doing a console yeah and when you watch the documentaries you, you understand that like they were hungry they were like yeah. it was like the long shot they they convinced Bill they did their thing but the hunger that they had for getting everyone involved they went after so many different genres but at the core of it. They started to build a culture around this green box from the color that they chose to the the newer features that they were throwing into it. But more than that, the games and everything, it spoke to people in a way that facilitated a culture. Yes. The way they advertised it, the way they pushed it. The games that they locked down. Much. I mean, I, yeah. I mean, you said the middle. I'll, I'll give them all the way to the end of the 360 era, E. I, I think they mm-hmm. nailed, I think they were doing their thing all the way through. That momentum was going to carry them. I feel them. like from the middle to the end, they got more involved in like, connect, like the connect, taking on the identity of the shooter box. Well, the connect too, but it was like we're the we're the 
Call of Duty box. Okay. And it was more like the marketing deal. And yeah, they, but don't and, forget. Yeah, but don't and, forget. And milk and yeah. pushing gears and milking that. Yes. Stuff, you know? Yes, they were. They were. But again, that's fine. And you can say what you want to say. But Eric, I, well, it depends on the gamer you were, too. It depends on the game you yeah. were. But I had no problem spending a lot of my time playing Call of Duty, playing Gears, playing, yeah, you yeah. know, I didn't play Halo they did it for a reason. much, but they did yeah. It for a reason. Right, right. Well, they had a, they had a winning formula and they had great games and the multiplayer was for its time was the best of the best. You know, it was the best of the best. But I think that but I think they also started to forget. They acted like they didn't need the gamer who was about like some of those JRPGs or about like those um Yeah, that's true. those special games that they kind of created that fit into a different pocket because a lot of people felt like it was the the Dreamcast continued. So the Dreamcast had a culture around it too, but it just it was like a little too late, right? Yep. So it was almost like that 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 carrying on, that picking up the torch of that console meant the people with the jet sets and stuff like that. And it's kind of like they start they stop talking to those people okay, and only yeah. focusing on one one segment of it, right? That's how at least I perceived it because I was I felt like I was one of those people. Like mm-hmm. I felt um, I told someone on Twitter like recently I was like I feel like they they haven't talked to me for a long time. Yeah. Because, you know, I was one of those people, and Mer- you remember this, and Brad, you remember this, we were out there, I was out there saying, well, it's always wait till E3, but why aren't you focused on games? Why are you so focused on hardware and power? Why, like, you're not even talking games. You're not doing this and this and that. People are like, well, games take time to make and shut up and wait till E3 and all that. Yeah. Okay. Like, yeah. Whatever. They were, now, yeah, they were again, playing more of, the, they were playing more of the, the advertising market more than the games market. Yeah, and and the way I kind of like flow is like I go with a like yeah where the games are and how I feel about the the whole the the whole advent of the creation itself, right? Because when Sony stepped on the rake, you know, tripped over their dick with the whole you'll get a second job <laughs> to get this console, yep. and it's gonna be them. Like, nah, I don't know about that, dude. Yeah, no, I'll see hell, you guys yeah. when you I'll see you guys when you come on come down off that high. That's right. So it was like about three years or so before I got a PS3. But what happened with that movie? They lost a lot of ground with, you know, that launch. And then they lost a lot of ground with their hack. Right? Yes. But what got it back? Gamer amnesia and building yep. a culture. They, they, they put their head down and they just started, boom, game, 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 game. Because all the other stuff is great. The bells and whistles are great. But you can't just sell a thing on the service part of it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, at the end of the gamers day, gamers want games. That's it's gamer. It's not servicer. No, it's not. It really isn't. It's it, it's funny, and that's the thing. So you know, I I have the PlayStation Plus, right? And they have mm-hmm. games, and they have their service, but I don't feel like Sony ever pushes that, uh, except for the multiplayer that we all need on console. Which you know, Brat made a good point about earlier. Yeah. That's yeah, that's a whole nother podcast. Um, but yep. like when it comes down to it, it, it's like they don't push their extra or their premium. It's like, there it is. There's the games. You want that library? Pay a little more. You don't want it? We're right. cool with that. Go buy this new game we got coming out next week. Cool. Thanks. You know, that's the way I feel. Yep. It's in, and, and it's like, and I, I seen a lot of people earlier in the chat saying, but Mooch, uh, PlayStation didn't have any games. I don't really know where they are. Uh, but I've been playing PlayStation games pretty much the entirety of this entire year as worry work joins us great to have the great worry work you want to get, you want to get a, a history lesson in 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 consoles <laughs> uh worry hey, uh, hey, hey, hey brad hey, hey what's up worry hey mooch real quick I, I gotta get going man okay buddy hey brad thanks for being here buddy i appreciate it yeah oh, I just realized, yeah i'm gonna have to check out check out oh, holy shit i come in everybody's leaving yeah, yeah well yeah i was just well i have a couple yeah. of, well here, here brad, you're, brad, you're brad, late worry Brappy, so I heard somebody talk about tripping over dicks, and I figured I'd pop in here. <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> Hold on a second, guys. I got a couple super chats, and then we'll we'll let Rory say a piece. Then we'll, we'll kind of I'm going to wrap it up myself here. It is uh, after the two hour mark here. Shout out to Four Star General. He says, "What's up, Mooch panel? Great show so far." Uh, Babor Country says Concord could be a stunner on the pro. Babor, that's one of the question marks. We need to see something. I really can't comment too much on that because we haven't seen much on that at all. Tactical says Casey Royals versus New York Mets tomorrow. Are you feeling confident, Mooch? Great show, by the way. Tactical, you after that 16-4 to win over the Braves, feeling very, very confident. Sports! Uh, God Emperor Sofa King says yeah. Final Fantasy Rebirth only sold $2 million, but Xbox is bad. It... it uh, 
I, I don't even know what to say to you, buddy. I, I don't. First of all, two million since when? That's not my problem. That's their problem. But, yeah, that's, <laughs> so they, I don't know why. They, yeah. that, that's not a me problem at all. It's uh, <laughs> right. And I and was that two million in the first like what five days? Uh, your boy Roy says there's people out there like myself who are ignorant to tech. That's why I use Apple. I would love to get a user friendly PC like Mooch is saying. Your boy Roy, shout out to you, buddy. I appreciate it. Uh, True Witty just comes out and says, how about you create your Gears character to go through each game like Mass Effect of old? Same for Halo, in my opinion, would feel closer to the yep. player. And that's what Eric's saying. Yep. You know? Because then you get people locked into feeling like kind of more like connected. And that's me saying that I think Halo still has value. Oh, yeah. You know, it's just, it's just it you got it. You can't. But evolve. You can't have both. You can't have the old. And you can't, it's also bringing the new and, you know, we're we're at the, the the half century mark, most of us. So it's like, yeah, yeah. Start talking to some of these other people, you know. <laughs> so. I'll tell you, man. It's just it's it's just one of those things. No, we were worried just to get your thoughts on it real quick before we we call it a night. We were just saying how Sea of Thieves is on PS Five the end of this month and. Uh, could this be could this be a massive hit? And is Microsoft watching this particular title really close? I think they're watching everything that they put elsewhere and see how it does. Um, what's interesting to me is you know they didn't need uh, the console market; it was shrinking. It's it's dying. It's not growing. We're going to go to PC. We're going to go to cloud. We're going to go to mobile. We're going to go all over these other places because console market is dying. And then once we do that, what happens? We circle all the way back to the console space and put our games mm -hmm. on the PlayStation. So I don't know. Uh, I'm of the mind that Microsoft really wants to be a third party publisher and they're just figuring out how to push everybody through that doorway. Mm -hmm. um, how you have a piece of hardware and also want to sell it to people while all of the things that make it valuable are elsewhere on platforms that are more successful. I don't know, but uh, I guess uh, they know something that I don't, or none of us know. Well, I think when it comes down to it, everybody was using, you know, the, the hundred billion dollars and everybody was like, you know, you don't spend a hundred billion dollars. And then, but the thing is though, you, you also don't spend a hundred billion dollars to not make that money back. And yeah. if their platform isn't selling, that right now, currently, the Xbox Series X and S is trailing behind the Xbox One era, which in the Xbox One era was seemingly their worst generation. Well, then right. what do they have to do? And the PC sales, I don't know, maybe the PC sales are also not doing what they wanted with their first party title. So what do you do? Oh, wow, there's 55 well, million consoles over there. We'll put it over don't there. Forget, Mooch exclusives, they don't matter. Well, yeah. Right. Yeah. To, to one it, of which them. Is, they don't matter until they do, and then they don't matter again. Right. You've got you've got <laughs> games. You've got games that can't be exclusive, but they're making television shows based on those games that are exclusive to other people's subscription services. Yeah. So Fallout is everywhere, right? It has to be everywhere. Fallout and has yet, to be everywhere. You need Amazon Prime to watch the Fallout TV show. So exclusives on one hand matter, on the other hand, they don't. It's a very uh, good I point. Know. I saw that on I saw that on Twitter today. I think it was that you yeah, who said that worry, or did, were you the one liking it and laughing? I couldn't remember. I saw you involved with that. Yeah, it's like the exclusives matter only when they're supposed to matter to Microsoft. It's yeah. it, same thing when they said right. when they were going through the FTC trials, right? They, it, 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 exclusives mattered. It was all over social media. Exclusives mattered. Period. That was just the way it was. Uh, we're going to be putting all of our Bethesda games. You know, Elder Scrolls Six is only going to be on Xbox. I don't see that anymore. Yeah, I mean, I, I think it's it's terrible. I, mean, I I would love to speak to Phil Spencer about, you know, just getting more people watching the Fallout television show. I can't understand how that's growing the market by having it only on Amazon Prime. It's terrible for for consumers. It's terrible, just terrible in general for people who love you know television shows. How dare they do that? Yeah, it should be available to everybody. Yeah, they, with, I thought they wanted all the screens. Where should yeah. you put that on Netflix and every screen? But every screen it should be. be. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If you have a TV with only yeah. rabbit ears, right? Even with yeah, just yeah, you, you should, should be able to watch, able exactly, to watch it. You know? Yes. Oh, uh, all right. So that yeah. being said, guys, I know Eric's got to go, and uh, I yeah, also yeah, got to get right. a little gaming in. I'm going to do a. You know, it's almost it's it's like a mini Friday tonight. So I'm going to enjoy uh, enjoy an adult beverage, have a little bit of fun, maybe a little gaming as well. I'll go in reverse order here and say shout out to the great worry worry worry. We got to get you back on for the full two hours, buddy. Uh, you're, you're doing yeah. a lot. I know you're like you know this whole hey, podcasting actually, thing, but worry's still making a lot of videos every week. So I'm like, dude, he's he's still putting I mean, I his work in. Myself, that's all. <laughs> it's, I, it's always it's always good stuff, though. Worry, that's the funny part. It know? is so, good. So keep it going, man. You know, you know, it's gonna before we go. 
Go can't ahead. wait. I hope we're around for this because I guess like I mentioned, you know, we're we're kind of long in the tooth, right? Oh my god, to- this right. is like the worst time to join this podcast. Jesus Christ, I was happy as right. hell with me. Okay, <laughs> he's got more <laughs> about playing. <laughs> We're gonna we're gonna be we're gonna be here we're gonna be here. We're gonna Holy be here. God, I hope we're around. I hope we're around. <laughs> I hope we're still here. You know, you know, we're, what, you we're like you know what you sound like? Uh, what's that? Our mooch can relate to this. You sound like an elderly Italian mother. <laughs> well, there you go. E. Com- <laughs> consistently, oh, I got this pain here. It could be this. I could be going in another week. Right, right. like, what is she doing <laughs> next door? Using all that water. <laughs> 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 I'm living next door to Gunga Din. <laughs> Gung, uh, now we know you're old, that you're referencing uh, Gunga Din. That's great. No, so great. Lib- you like just Libya lost about like, f- like 50 fucking watches. <laughs> Libya, no, no, no. Lib- Libya from The Sopranos. That's the first time I ever heard of Gunga Din. Is what she said. Oh, you did really? Oh, oh, yeah, I was like, what is, what is Gunga Din? I'm like, okay. Gunga Din. Yeah, you can't, talk about, old, you can't it, talk about sports or old references on a gaming podcast, guys. You can't do it. No, no, no. 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 no I was going to say, I want the inevitable documentary. We got the the, X, the OG Xbox documentary, which is fantastic if people haven't watched it. But, yes. Uh, yes I, want the, the initiative, I want the inevitable, inevitable documentary about all of the ABK stuff and what really happened and what it really meant and the exclusives mattering and not mattering and all that stuff. That's going to be fascinating to watch. I completely agree. You know, but it'll probably uh, take 20 years to get that. You can get a little taste of it by, by deciphering Mikey Barra's tweets every once in a while. Oh, yeah. oh man, we talked about that tonight. Yeah, you, that you can was see fun. how he was a little bit, you know. You can see that he's, yeah. uh, you know, doesn't like the direction that they were going in, <laughs> right? And he's like, "I can't get away from you guys." And like I, tr- I tried to leave, and then you, you showed up again, and then you threw me out again. What's going on? I should say again. But, when I know. thought I was out, they pulled me back yeah. in. <laughs> right. That's amazing that they they went, they bought, he left, he goes over there, they buy that, he's like, "See you later." All right, so that, yep. <laughs> that, that was right, that was great. No, um, shout out to the great Worry Word. Worry, you want to let them know about that that channel of yours because they need to see that ha- that hairdo. That's what you keep. You know, you I, I, you're like like the content. Don't, but this hairdo is phenomenal. Yeah, my hair. Yeah, it's just every once in a while I just I happen to pull back. <laughs> the problem is there's too many mirrors everywhere. You know what I mean? <laughs> and I walk by them. I look. I'm just like, man, how did the hair get that perfect? How did but, it get that? No, they don't have to go to my channel. The hell with my <laughs> they channel. They don't have to go to Who my cares? channel. Guys, go over and check out the <laughs> Worry War Gamer over on YouTube. Yeah. Shout out to the great Lotus Esprit again, Esprit, uh, the uh, amazing Lotus. Thank you for the Lotus $10 Esprit. super chat. That's a great car. It is, isn't it? Yeah. I'm glad I'm saying that right. True Woody says that Fallout TV show digs deep in the game lore. I'm hoping so because the one thing with that show yeah. that I'm looking forward to, I'm going to start watching I it watched tomorrow. I the first three episodes already. It's good, right, Worry? And it definitely. That- definitely follows the lore of the world in the games absolutely well i'm glad you say that because i'm i've not played a whole you guys know this i say it all the time i haven't played a whole lot of fallout so i'm actually intrigued to Same see I, I, I worry my question for you then is is if someone like me who doesn't know the lore is it something no, that i'm fine. gonna will i be able to learn will i be able to pick up on it and start from yeah you know, yeah yeah you don't need this, to know i mean okay yeah, good all right good to, uh, that's actually what I'm excited about is the fact that I don't know a whole lot about it. I think that's going to make for a better watch because I'm not going in with any preconceived, you know. Yeah, yeah. It's, then you'll love it. You'll really like so, it. You know? Okay. Awesome. So I, how do you say that again, Worry? Because I, I am saying it wrong. It's the Lotus Esprit. Lotus Esprit. Lotus Esprit? Yeah. I'm saying it right, right? Yeah. Okay, good. I the want to car make sure. you're talking about, correct? The, well, it's the car, but it's also a, a gentleman's name in the... Super yeah, chat. but I'm assuming he's naming himself after the car. I would also assume Unless that... Unless his parents were hippies and decided to call him Lotus Esprit. <laughs> I think Lotus is a great name regardless. But shout yeah. out to Lotus. I appreciate the super chat, buddy. Thank you so much. Uh, Eric, uh, also great to have the voice of reason on tonight. It was really, really fun to have you combat in a couple of great points that went back and forth. E, let people know where they can find you. Thanks for being here tonight, buddy. No, thanks for having me, man. Uh, always good to talk to Worry, too. Uh, so definitely got to set that up again. But uh, no, again, thanks for having me. Chat, thanks for having me. Great discussion tonight. Uh, yeah, but you can find me on Twitter, just kind of tooling around. My biggest yeah, thing now is never really trying to talk about games. He's going to have a century mark. <laughs> yeah, we're going to be out of here soon, man. <laughs> so, yeah. 
Appreciate it, E. Shout out to Warawana. He says, Mooch, I told you it was like the car. Warawana, thank you, and I apologize if I missed when you said that in the chat. I do apologize. He's like, he's yelling at me. I and listen, he, I deserve, oh, it. I I deserve that. I deserve that. I definitely didn't see that. I apologize. A couple of shout outs to the guys that had to leave. You guys know Basement Radio Arcade Podcast. Brap had to leave a little bit early right there. He sh came in late, left early. That's the typical Brap on Thursday nights. Shout out to the middle-aged game guy. Mag was in with us tonight. I appreciate Mag being here. Guys, I know you're over there probably watching a little bit of DPS. Guys, slow-mo backslap. Shout out to the great gaming forte as well. They're doing DPS podcast right now. You guys know I'm a big fan. Love having him on the show. I love what he does on Giant Bomb. He's a lot of fun. He, he definitely shoots a lot out there and he also takes a lot back dude he's great the great mm -hmm. jeff grubb uh was with us you guys know it's at jeff grubb uh over on um on twitter please go over and follow jeff he's always always in the mix so it's always fun to have jeff on the show shout out to jeff shout out to all you guys that were great they stopped by tonight as well you guys were all fantastic all fantastic people uh, the great, the great Lotus who just came and gave the gift of giving. He just kept giving off those subs. Outstanding. Lotus, thank you so much. Also, shout out to MASH for giving out 10 subs as well. That was a lot of fun. You guys are all the best. We'll be back next Thursday, 7 p.m. Eastern. And guys, also go over to twitch.tv, Mooch TV. It's uh, drop the O's for zeros, M00CHTV. And we're going to be doing some Elden Ring. And I believe we're going to be doing some Helldivers 2 this weekend. So go over there and check it out. Shout out to Ocelot. Ocelot, let me know if you're able to join us on that stream as well. It'll be a lot of fun. Guys, hit the like button on the way out. Hopefully we hit 400, 500 likes. It'll be so much fun to see that actually pop up on the channel. That being said, enjoy the rest of your week. And we'll see you guys next Thursday. Peace out and good night.